Territory taking over Cincinnati at Great American Ballpark. Scotty Braun with two former Reds, who are, you know, pretty big deal here. Todd Frazier and Danny Graves back home. You feel good? Feels good, man. Get in the stadium again. I get that fall vibe, playoff time. Watch out. Dude, I get the all star vibe when the Todd father, which is the mom <laughs> still is right there. That's what I get every time I see him. Were you there? Um, so I was in the hotel because I had a, a, a baby at the time and, you know, he just couldn't handle the, the home run. They wouldn't been able to handle the noise either. It was, yeah. it was rocking. It so. was loud. It I, was well, nice. I could the, hear it at the hotel. The way that <laughs> baseball came off the bat. You kidding me? Oof, man. It you was, needed earplugs. Yeah. You can just, I feel it. I feel the vibe. I feel some Reds <laughs> vibe coming. Playoff vibe, baby. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So we're going to talk to some Reds and Twins. They're playing tonight. We'll be here the next three days here on the field today. And also we are celebrating coming soon a new sports book um, from BetMGM that is opening up. And you guys know the area much better than I do. You guys lived here before. It's at the Banks um, at the corner of 2nd Street and Joe Nuxall Way in the area formerly called Gala Park. So yeah, you, you'll be able you to throw a baseball there. and hit it right over the stadium right here. Perfect. So walking distance. So for you, we know we don't <laughs> want to do too much. I don't really you know, know how to get around anywhere so <laughs> i'll just follow you guys it will be good you take we'll be me good. okay so we'll do some things there uh later on this week and also um in addition to talking to some twins and reds we're going to talk to uh, russ dorsey coming up pretty soon let's charge the damn mound from the weekend and we'll get to all the division clinching that went on like the dodgers and still wrapping up what the braves did and talk orioles and rays making the playoffs but mm-hmm. we have a jordan in this league and he's going to be a free agent this offseason and Man, you can't go 48 hours without a little drama in Anaheim. So <laughs> Shohei Otani over the weekend, I remember it was late Friday night. And people mm-hmm. start freaking out on social, Danny. They're like, he cleared out his locker. Shit went down. What happened? Also, keeping in mind, he's hurt. So what did you take from everything that went down? Because now we also, and we'll show you, have video of him in Japan. The team said he was going to stay with them for the rest of the season, but you've got some theories and let's get the player perspective of what you think happened here. Yeah. And not that my theory is a hundred percent correct, but you know, obviously a guy like Shohei, you don't want to see him leave, especially as a fan. And, and I consider us fans of Shohei whenever he's with the team and, and traveling on the road or at home, you always want to go see Shohei. My take is maybe he just is gone for the road trip. Maybe the Angels didn't want to pay for that extra player to go on the road. That's Stop. probably not it. But, <laughs> uh, but they do come back. They finish the season out uh, at home. So maybe he'll be back for the last homestand. Um, maybe he had something to take care of back in Japan at this moment since he's not playing. Why not? Right. Quick weekend getaway in yeah. Japan. It's a short. Short flight. Yeah. What, 18 hours. <laughs> I, I would assume. I mean. They found his water bottle in the bottom of the trash. What, what does that say? Watch out. <laughs> the that drama. <laughs> that, right. Locker Listen. cleared out, but water bottle in the trash? I'm going to say it again. You've heard me say this a hundred times. They should have traded him at the deadline. <laughs> I was a big believer in that. I was talking about that nonstop. They would have got a boatload back. If I'm Mike Trout, here we go again, man. More drama. Just now, now it's like, all right, I have something else to talk about in the offseason. Why I want out of here, unless you're going to make some huge adjustments. But, yeah, I mean. This is this is crazy. He's in Japan, right? I mean, it's not an easy fight. So, like, what what is really going on here? We don't know. There's there's stuff that we really don't know about. Tell me, like, for you, if you get hurt last couple weeks of the season, what happens? What is the communication like with the team? Are they saying, hey, you're good, dude. Your season's done. Go home. No. Or do you have to hang around? No, you hang around, man. You're in it for the long haul. You got to rehab for one. Uh, you got to hang out with your boys and your teammates who suffered through the whole year of spring training mm-hmm. of nine months, maybe even close to, you know, 10 months of nonstop baseball. If you're going to leave at the end, what does that show of you? you know? Yeah. About the theory of the trade. So I have ADHD really bad, so I'm going to be all over the place. So here's Good. when you, you talk about, they should have traded him. Do, is there a possibility that they knew that something was wrong with his arm? Because wasn't he having the finger issues apparently at that time, uh, yeah. which are connected to the, the UCL. Maybe they knew that uh, if they did try to trade him, another team w- would see that he was hurt. Yeah, that, that could that could be an answer to as well. But, <laughs> but then why would they load mind. up on players on the other end? You know what I'm saying? 
If like they, were, they, they, they added like four or five guys. I Look, think they genuinely wanted to try and win, and yeah. they had you know kind of false hope. Listen, everybody's got an answer. There's conspiracy theories going on. I Listen, you have yeah. yours, he has yeah. mine, or I have mine, he has his. Let's make it a, like a thirty on thirty. You never know what. <laughs> well, where did they find 30. out? Like, how do they know it was Shohei's bottle, the water bottle that was? I, in I, the they, I think they have their names on them. I think that's why everybody gets the. Really, they bottle. got names on water yeah, bottles. Yeah, they now? do. It's like we're in nine-year-old baseball. When you, you say water <laughs> bottle, do you mean like a plastic water bottle? No, oh, he's got it, the nice one. No, no, it's probably a the big reusable. one. Yeah, or why oh, is it definitely not reusable. reusable. At the very least, you should auction that thing off. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's see, that's you thinking that's about that. Brain. That's that's angels people thinking about that stuff too as well. You can make a good buck. <laughs> yeah. You know, they take every foul ball that gets in the dirt and they put them off and they sell them for money too as well. It's a good idea thinking, but we'll never know what the reasons are. He's hurt. We know that. Mm-hmm. Number one, he's got the oblique. He's got the arm problem. And they said he's going to have a procedure. They did announced that on the, the oblique or, or the arm on the arm okay so he's elbow procedure they're being pretty vague about it right now okay so we don't know what kind of procedure they're going to have well because you don't know if it's full-on tommy john yeah. or i don't understand none of us are going to try and act like we're medical experts but at the same time i think there's one thing that we can agree on even though we have all of our conspiracy theories from the weekend yeah raise your hand if you think that there is a zero percent chance or say 0.0001 like i don't know all the other teams fold that Shohei Otani is going to be on the Angels in 2024. Raise your hand if if you think there's essentially no chance that he's going to be on the Angels. No chance. No, no chance. chance. Yeah. Because I think there were time periods where people the number kept going down. They were like, oh, you know, not likely, but maybe he's just comfortable here. I think the way that this has played out the last few weeks says that he doesn't really care about the team anymore, like the organization. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying his teammates and and they're not on the same page because we're getting weird announcements and wh- why is his locker cleared out yeah. before the team says anything? Well, I, I watched y'all's show when when Trout was on and and he was talking when he said that uh, for Shohei it's not necessarily about the money yeah. even though it's been <laughs> ridiculous amounts of money that people are saying that yeah. he's going to get. I mean, if that's the case, if it's not about the money, then maybe that zero point zero 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 one yeah. is there. Let's be real. Like he's not gonna. I don't think the association, player association, is gonna let him sign just a like a, a regular deal. Just no, to no. He's in. gonna get paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and Trout was saying like, hey, he's gonna get his money wherever. The one thing that I think is for sure is he's going to sign with a team that gives him a very, very high chance of being in the playoffs. Not in the future, next year. Yeah, he already has played half a decade without any playoff baseball, mm-hmm. and he wants to win. I'd like to see him come here. Cincinnati. Cincinnati, baby. Why not? I would they, love to see that. I, I don't know. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just, I, th- here's my thing, though. I will say. That would say, be a huge flash. That would be remarkable. It would be massive. But on the money side of things, you got to keep in mind, this guy is going to pay for himself for a good chunk of the contract Whoever in endorsement deals yeah. alone. And I'm yeah. not talking about personal endorsement deals. Read up about this. And there'll be a ton of articles about it in the offseason. Endorsement deals for the team. Like the Angels are making probably about $20 million this year nope. just on Shohei Otani yeah. and the signage and the sponsorship for them. Okay, other side of this, even more conspiracy theories. <laughs> you ready for me. Anthony Rendon? <laughs> Did you see him talking this weekend? Oh, boy. He's been messing around with the media and the last time, no hobbling in place. He didn't want to talk to them, right? <laughs> we know he speaks English. He doesn't like dealing with the media. He's got a deep bone bruise. So people are like, deep bone bruise forever? And then all of a sudden this weekend, he's like, no, I got a fractured tibia. The team didn't tell you. Yep. And then the Angels <clears> leak <throat> that he's seen now five doctors. The first four doctors all said it was just a bone bruise. Two of them with the team, two of them with the player that the player went to. He goes to a fifth doctor who says it's a fractured tibia. So to me, I think this isn't even a conspiracy theory. This is pretty obvious, Todd Father. Player saying, I'm hurt, and the team didn't tell you about it, that it's a fracture, not a bruise team leaking we disagree with the diagnosis and think that four out of five doctors say you've got a bruise and you probably should be playing for us and we don't feel like you want to well well here's the thing for me how many doctors are you allowed to see i thought thought you're allowed to get a second opinion right (laughs) that's that's the biggest thing for me you're supposed to get a second opinion yeah at the end of the day so he's got now five opinions yeah and Where's the disconnect here? So I, I, I help me. We've, we've, we've heard it before where we have a doctor say one thing and another one comes mm-hmm. you're like, oh, all right, you're right. But at the same time, four or five guys now. So this is I didn't know if you were allowed to do that or not. Like there's there's some discrepancy yeah. here. You guys tell me what happens when you guys get hurt. What happens? Like, well, like he said, I think you're entitled to get that extra the second opinion, but you're not going to get it from an urgent care either. So, yeah, you, you know, exactly. where where these doctors come from. And I don't know 
what who these doctors are, and I'm not trying to act like I know medical stuff, but um, you should be able to know if it's a fracture or if it's not a fracture, right? Isn't that what technology does with x-rays and stuff? <laughs> should be a lot easier, <laughs> well, yeah. Four yeah. said no, and then a fifth said yeah, according to the team, right? This is the team leaking this. I think the team's doing that to try and kind of defend itself because he threw them under the bus this yeah. weekend. Oh, I got a fractured tibia. Nobody told you. Yeah, I, I think it's time up there, too. This Dude, it is, this it is, is getting weird listen, out but, there. But that's a big contract, too, as well. So he's there for how many? He's got three years? more years yeah. at, I think, 38 million he's a year the going, next three years. They not, said he's not considered anywhere. retirement. He goes, yeah, I've considered retirement the past 10 years. Anthony <laughs> Rendon is the one guy. He said he's that. He's a beauty, bro. They asked him about the future of the Angels. He's like, oh, we don't even have time to get into all that. Yeah. Like, he was kind of crushing the team over the weekend. He doesn't give a fuck. He had one, he had one of the most <laughs> historic games, I think. It was uh, the game that ended up like getting 20 something runs. He went five for five with like some 10, 15 RBIs. I don't know exactly. Don't quote me. After the game's like, oh, how you feel? He goes, man, I wish the game wasn't so long. You know, like that's a, <laughs> that's a Rendon answer. And he it just is. like broke history. So uh, that's why I love the guy so much. He's an awesome human being, but he's a, he's real. He doesn't want to play that. He's a realist. There's guys that I'm play the this, vibe. And Danny, you can, you can agree with me or not. There's guys that play this game, one for the money mm -hmm. and two that treat it like a job. And not just for the love of baseball. And that that's just part of it. There's not, I'm not saying a boatload of guys, but there's a handful who I've played with that are playing, oh, this is a job to me and I'm trying to make as much money as I can. Well, yeah. And, and especially if your team's not in the hunt yeah. for anything, you wait for the first and 15th and, and you count your days down till you can pick your own friends yes, and exactly, go home. Exactly. So, <laughs> and, um, and, and I'm not saying Rendon's doing that. But the way right. he comes off, it's just like, ah, another day at the park, you know? Well, but, you know what this means at the end of the day, right? Mike Trout's not going to be an angel next yes. year either. Thank Along with Shohei, he's going to ask to get traded, and the Thank Reds God. are going to trade for Mike Trout somehow. Let's and, go, baby. And I mean, because got a little Reds bias. Because well, listen, if if he if I'm all about it, I'm all about it. Wherever he gets traded, the Angels are going to have to take a, a big lump sum of that salary that's sure. owed to him, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So say it's twenty five or twenty million a year that the team that gets him is going to have to pay. Yep. I'll pay that for Mike Trout. Hell yeah, <laughs> I'd pay more than that for Mike Trout. Easily. I think. It depends on how much prospect, you know, capital that a team wants to give up versus taking on the money. Because for me, I'm like, I was just in um, Atlantic City and a lot of the Philly fans are asking me, like, do you think you can get Trout? I said, I actually do. Number one, he does have full no trade. So mm -hmm. he can dictate no, where he wants, he wants to go. Yeah. If they trade him somewhere, he doesn't want to go. Yep. He's not going. Mm -hmm. Philly, he'd go, right? He's building the course. 100%. Go back yeah, home. Right down the street. Play with your boy Bryce and all the other superstars. I said, I think one advantage that Philly would have over some other ball clubs, I think they'd take a lot of the money and say, you know, we're not going to give you many prospects. We want to worry about a short term. But Yeah, I agree. We'll and take a lot of the money left. It's like 250 ish for It's, it's going to be like an Otani thing. If he goes to Philadelphia, there's going to be a lot of money being made for those Philadelphia Philly Hell Braves. Yeah. Those people are going to buy everything Mike Trout. Uh, speaking of rich, the Braves are super rich, and they win division titles every year. <laughs> every Sixth year. in a row. That was clinched last week. But this past weekend, records being set, too. So the huge controversy, of what, about a year and a half ago now, is Freddie Freeman leaving, going to the Dodgers. They end up trading for Matt Olson, signing him to an extension, and he is a superstar. He has 52 home runs mm -hmm. this year. He sets the Braves' single-season franchise record. We still have about, what, a couple weeks left of baseball Twelve. for him to get – he could get 60 home runs this year. Yeah. We're oh, barely talking he about high, him. That would be amazing. He's, he's kind of – he's not quiet. He's actually a good interview. But we're not talking enough about him because the Braves are in cruise control. There's a dude that's way louder on the field yeah. than Ronald Acuna Jr. <laughs> yeah. But this is the best power bat in baseball right now. Can there be two MVPs on one team <laughs> yeah, at the end of the year? Well, the Dodgers want to know that too with oh. Freddie and Mookie. Oh. Watch out. Hey, listen, this is only good for baseball. Yeah. It's so much fun to watch. Now people are staying up later on at night to watch the Dodgers play, mm -hmm. and they get to watch the Braves play too. Even though they just won the division, I still want to see, you know, is Acuna going to get another steal? Yep. Is, is Olsen going to go deep again? I mean, it's so much yeah. fun to watch, I mean, at the end of the day. His team did get dusted <laughs> this weekend by the Marlins, Yeah, they too. did. Good yeah. for the Marlins. Yeah. yeah. So you, about a week ago, you look at the Marlins' schedule that they had coming up for the next week – thought they would be done like, because, shit. yeah this is, it wasn't even going to be fair but then they ended up uh playing well and they sweep the brave so they're right back in it actually more than just in it but um that braves team man they're, they're ridiculous Oof. what's the final number for olsen 56 so how many games left did you say 12 if there's 12 i'm saying he's gonna get 55 or 56 yeah i go 55 All 55 right. yeah i'll go 58 Jesus, Ooh. that he stays Save hot. Some for the they playoff. don't sit their guys though. They don't sit their guys we'll much. See. The Braves we'll have that thing going in the clubhouse where they're like, "We play every day." The guys play every day. Acuna, I think, has still played well, except for this past weekend, finally. But he's played. I got to see how game. many steals he has because I said seventy. 
<clears throat> somebody was going to have 70. So we got to look that he's up. He's right around that range for <sighs> pace, but he's got the calf from the weekend where he yeah, didn't play a little bit. So he so might have some time off. We'll see what happens. All right. All right. So like we talked about earlier, we're going to talk to some Reds and some Twins throughout the next few days. I can promise you that we'll talk to Pablo Lopez 66. later on today. <laughs> and let's hit our poll question. The team to not make it in the wild card race pick one team that you feel confident is not going to make it into the playoffs watch stadium.com slash foul territory or the qr code on your screen between the diamondbacks cubs marlins and reds which of those four do you think's not going to make it we'll swing right back with russ dorsey your so, son so smashes me, a yeah. walk-off homer in little league no. you're like no? no, not in Little League. No. So, not yet. No, not yet. Really? No, no. So does, when? Does so he when want to? Question. Does he want to? Oh, man. I'm sure he does. I, I just think it's a bad look at a, a nine-year-old doing that. <laughs> so at what age? Pimping <laughs> home runs, going around the base like this. I, I'll, I'll throw him off the team. I ain't no, no chance. Oh, you're I, tough. I think when, <laughs> when you when – you, I would say high school. High okay. school. Going, then you can start to yeah. flaunt it a little. When you, when, you get, when you get about 10 home runs in high – or, you know, Man, it's so hard. I don't know. I would say, I would say junior year in high school because then you got a name for yourself a little bit. Did Little League World Series Todd Frazier get after it? Because I don't remember. I love no. I mean, like when they were catching you on ESPN, did you do like a little like, let's go, baby? You I, I held, with Tom's I, River. I held the bat up when I hit a home run you one did? time. Yeah, I, I held it up and then dropped it. We got to find film, but I, I wasn't. <laughs> I never bat flip though. Well, and that was pre bat flip era. Your your kid does it. What do you say? That. Yeah, thank you. All right, you do all say right. that. I do. Just yeah. because it's not the game is so humbling, and when you step yeah, on people, it, it, and at that age either, when no. especially at that age, when you step on people on your way up the ladder, you got to come back down at some point, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it will find and you. And to me, you are the way you affect and the way you interact with people along the way is going to last way longer than you hitting a home run, standing at home plate, and doing like. The rocket launcher. And like <laughs> uh, I got, I got these flip. kids. Like, there's, there's, I'm not saying that makes you a better or worse player. It makes you a better or worse person. And now back to foul territory. Let's get after it. It's FT Live on Stadium, and we're in Cincinnati, and Russ Dorsey is joining us right now. Russ, time you out, time out. Russ, here? you rocking that Chicago shirt. My Buccaneers, baby, took care of business, big That's dog. right. Oh, our <laughs> Listen, Buccaneers. Let's I, go, baby. I, I don't want to talk about it, right? Like, no, this, is the, this is my Chicago Bulls shirt, because as you oh, can see, oh, right. Chicago, we've moved on from football season. Like, we don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> I, or like, if it wasn't for fantasy football, I don't know sorry. what I'd be doing. I put out a tweet yesterday. Like, I'm just worried about brunch on Sundays now. Like, I, I'm not. I'm done with football. <laughs> it, it had a hint of orange in there. Sorry, that's my bad. I, I mean, yeah, no, I, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, we, we, I'm, not, I'm not even thinking about them anymore. The, the team that shall not be named. That's what we're gonna call them. All right, that's messed up though because the Cubs play on Sundays. So, are you down on the Cubs after what happened this weekend with yeah. the Diamondbacks? What the, What the hell? They, they get swept all of a sudden. We don't know if they're gonna make it. Am I down on the Cubs? Listen, they're playing the worst baseball they've played in the second half right now, right? At a point where you need to be playing your best baseball. I think if you're looking for, if you're a Cubs fan out there and you're looking for a glass half full view, they have a series against Pittsburgh and Colorado this week. And then you have uh, Atlanta. And then the last series of the season for the Cubs up in Milwaukee, which should be a really good series against the Milwaukee Brewers. And that could determine a lot in terms of where the Cubs are when it comes to the postseason. Um, they, they just they didn't play well against the Arizona Diamondbacks, who were right on their tail in the wild card standings. And now for the D-backs, you're in cruise control. You're in front of the Cubs. And now they're tied with the Miami Marlins, who've been playing really good baseball, exciting baseball over the weekend for that final wild card spot. So. Is there hope for the Cubs? Sure. You got to play well against Pittsburgh. You got to play well against Colorado. That's not guaranteed because they dropped two of three last week in Colorado against the Rockies. So you have to beat these teams that you need to beat that you're better than. But those teams are where they are for a reason. And if the Cubs want to get to where they want to go, you got to beat those teams. Well, well, let me ask you this. Who, who's the, who's the fully to blame for this little downfall they got going on here? Like, are, are the guys not stepping up? Is it pitching? Is it hitting? I mean, who's to blame? 
Well, they had their ace, Justin Steele, on the mound on Friday, who has been right in the Cy Young conversation, you know, with Blake Snell. And he gives up six runs in less than four innings, something that we hadn't seen from him before. And guys are going to go through their struggles on the mound like we've seen it from a lot of Cy Young candidates, right? Garrett Cole can go out there and strike out 15 or he'll give up five runs every once in a while. Like, you don't expect that from him. But at this point in the year, it's magnified, right? Like, when you don't play well, people look at it like, oh, my gosh, it's the end of the world. They're still right there, right? And for a Cubs team that I don't know if people even saw them being in a playoff conversation at this point in the season, now that you're here, I know living here in the city – Cubs fans went through all the emotions of, you know, I don't even care anymore. This team isn't good. Fire everybody too. What, wait, what? Do, we've been in playoff position this whole time in the second half. What do you mean we might not make the playoffs? So this is what you, if you're a fan base, this is what you want. You want to be, you want your team to be playing games that matter down the stretch. Now for the Chicago Cubs, you have to get back to being that team that you were in the second half that had a top five offense, some of the best starting pitching in the big leagues and, and get back to playing the baseball that got you here. Yeah, so if the Cubs start winning, Russell, we know that uh, nobody's going to watch the Bears, so that's something to watch in Chicago. But as far <laughs> as Arizona, now that they're back in it, how dangerous can they be when uh, with Zach Gallen and Merrill Kelly in a playoff set setting? Yeah, I I like the D-backs because they're fun and they're athletic and they're there's they're so young as a team, like they don't know like they shouldn't necessarily be here, right? They are uh, managed well by Tori Lovello, who's been there for a long time now, and he they, he has them prepared to play, right? Like, they knew they needed to kick some ass in that series against the Chicago Cubs, and that's exactly what they did. And they looked focused, and they looked ready, and they looked like a team that wants to go to the postseason, right? And you're seeing guys like Lourdes Gurriel and Christian Walker and, and then these young kids like Gabriel Moreno and, and Corbin Carroll they're coming out and they're playing their best baseball when you need to play your best baseball. And I think for the D-backs, listen, nobody knows what's in store for them. I don't know if anybody expected them to be here, but now that you're here, you want to go for it. You want to go to the postseason. You want to prove people wrong that didn't think you could be here. And I think the D-backs, some of that youthful energy, I, I think the same thing about thought the same thing about the Reds in the second half is, you know, Youthful energy can carry you, right, even if you're at a talent deficit because you don't know what you don't know. And if you're one of these young kids up in the big leagues first or second year, it's like, all right, let's go. Like, we don't care who's in front of us. We don't care if the Braves are there, the Dodgers. We're going to come out every night trying to beat you. All right, so let's put the pressure on. We have the poll question running right now on watchstadium.com slash foul territory. You just have to pick one team out of these four that you feel confident is not going to be in the postseason. Arizona, Chicago, Miami, Cincinnati, because we're here. So I don't want to be too loud with it. <laughs> One team that I am confident will not make it to the postseason. Correct. Careful, Russ. Todd, I love On you. On many Danny, fronts. You know I love you too. Uh, don't start with that crap. <laughs> Look at and make sure, <laughs> make sure, because if, you, if go. you go the wrong way, I'm gonna throw a schedule at you. No, listen, I'm because, gonna yeah, go ahead. Let's hear what yeah, your answer is. It's only because first. we buried the Bears. That's yeah, why exactly. Look, I bury the Bears with you. I'm right there. <laughs> I'm gonna say Cincinnati just because of those teams. I just don't trust the starting pitching at this point. Make sure we save this clip in a couple of weeks. That's all we That's have. That's fine. Thanks, That's fine. If I'm wrong, <laughs> I'm gonna come up here. Y'all gonna have me on? I'm like. I was wrong, bro. I, was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> just I just think it's the starting pitching. It's been the thing that's been their weakness this year. I love the lineup. I love the young players. I love Ellie and Matt McClain and Spencer Steer. Uh, Will Benson having a breakout year. Like, I just – I love what they do in their lineup. I just don't know if they're going to be able to score six and seven runs a game over this last two and a half weeks of the season. That's really hard to do when you know that your starting pitching isn't necessarily there like those other three teams. Just you're forgetting though, we're in Cincinnati right now. Todd Father's probably going to walk into that clubhouse and be like, Who's hitting dingers for me tonight in the next few days? They got the <laughs> Twins for three, then the Pirates over the weekend. Next week, two against the Guardians, and they finish their season against the Cardinals. I mean, it's not easy, but it's not daunting. It's not daunting compared to some others, but but okay. Pirates and Cardinals for some reason have their number this year. That's the big, that's the only problem I got. Mm -hmm. For some reason, those two teams have been dominant against them for, and, and you know. Hopefully they can flip the script here. That's all. 
Hey, I want to change the gears a little bit. I want to talk about Shohei Otani. We were talking about a little bit ago about this whole debacle they got going on. His water bottles at the end of the trash can <laughs> in Japan, you know, bumping, doing his thing up there, having fun in the club, wherever he was at, man. What do you, what do you think of this? And, uh, man, this poor Angels, man, what's going on? They're going to – there's going to be a book written, a 30 for 30, about this era of Angels baseball. I, I said the same right? thing. Like, I don't – we're going to look back and say you had two of the best players to ever lace them up for six years, and they exactly. never came close to reaching the postseason. And I think that's a shame. And, and I think the Angels as an organization, like, I don't know. what, And even not, not even, you know, Trout not being able to be in the postseason. Otani in his entire tenure in L.A. not reaching the postseason. Then this Anthony Rendon thing where – He's not talking to the media about his injury. Then he says, yeah, I've had a fractured tibia this whole time. I don't know why they didn't say it. You got to ask them. Like, there's just – it's thing after thing after thing after thing after thing. And how can you succeed as an organization? Like, all these things aren't just happening for no reason. And I don't think – like, it's not people picking on you. Like, there's just all these different situations where it's just like, well, what are the angels doing? Right? Like, why are you as an organization – viewed this way why are people internally looking at you this way where you have players on your roster who are like well i'd rather be away than be with this team over the last two and a half weeks of the season right uh like why are you still trying to have mike trout in the lineup at this point in the season as opposed to just shutting them down i know mike is a competitor he wants to go out there and play but there's two and a half weeks left and you have no shot in the reason the postseason shut mike trout down right and for anthony rendon like you're, you're gonna look back at that contract and say, man, like at the time we thought it worked, it has not worked. Um, but like you got to have more communication, not only with the player, but with you know the media that are asking these questions about what's going on with your two hundred and forty million dollar third baseman, and why is nobody answering for that until now he's gone out of his way and said i don't know you gotta ask them then you come out and say well this is what happened xyz like there's just it's thing after thing after thing after thing after thing and that snowballs on you as an organization and then people are going to start looking around you know you get the free agency it's like well, why would i want to come here they had two of the best players to ever lace them up and haven't even sniffed the playoffs they're going to be really bad for the next few years i feel very confident about that <laughs> people don't want to go there they have no farm system. It, they have guys leaving. Obviously, Otani's gone. We think Trout's going to be gone, which is going to create a really fun offseason. Rendon's going to be on the books. They got to deal with him. I feel like they almost don't want him there at this point because he's been a negative whenever he's front of the press. It just creates controversy like this weekend. So we'll see what happens. All right. Rosie, your picture. It was really fun this weekend watching the Rays and the Orioles, little AL East battle, and you had some of the walk off magic from Baltimore gets them into the postseason. So your thoughts on the series and both sides here, really um, clinching Rays have been doing it now year after year. Baltimore hasn't been there since the uh, Adam Jones, Chris Davis, Buck Showalter era. What do you think? Now great baseball, right? And that's what you want, like playoff type baseball. As we get to these final couple of weeks of the season, we had a raise in Orioles on Friday night baseball on Apple and like just, Every pitch with every inning, you could feel the intensity continue to grow and grow and grow. And the crowds have been fantastic around the big leagues. Like you see the numbers of people showing up to the ballpark, but in Baltimore, where they were just, they've been waiting to explode as a fan base to watch a team that goes out there and competes. And, you know, the Rays are an interesting team from the standpoint of they lost three fifths of their rotation, right? You lose Drew Rasmussen, you lose Shane McClanahan. Uh, you bring in Savali from the Cleveland Guardians. You have Shane Boz that you brought in last year to be in rotation. He's recovering from Tommy John surgery. You lose Jeffrey Springs to Tommy John surgery. And they've been able to continue to chug along and find guys and have depth. And I think that's really impressive. And then their lineup has been able to sustain them uh, as we get to the end of the season. So, you know, the Rays are in a good position. They're well managed by Kevin Cash. And then on the other side with the Baltimore Orioles, that lineup is fun, man, and it's nasty. And you have Cedric Mullins and you have Anthony Santander and Adley Rushman. That's the engine of that thing and has changed the culture there. And Austin Hayes, and then you bring up Heston Kerstad and all these young players, like that energy that I keep talking about, like that's real, right? And it's not and I think fan bases feel that. I think players feel that in game, especially when you get to the point of the season where there's a lot of pressure on these teams. Like if you're in an organization where you haven't been to the postseason 
in a long time. You got Adam Jones in the building, right? Like you want to go out and you want to perform, and they've been able to do that. Yeah, and as we can see there, last postseason appearance. Good look at the lineup. J.J. Hardy sighting oh, there, right? Huh? Mark nice. Trumbo. Like Mark Trumbo cleaning up. It's cool. It's a good look back. Hey, Russ, um, enjoy your uh, your Sunday brunch. Actually, we'll talk to you later <laughs> in the week. I just wanted to let you know. And, and Danny misses you. I miss you so much, Russell. I miss you too, buddy. I miss you too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Russ. We'll talk to you see soon. See you guys. Much. Cheers. That's Russ Dorsey from Stadium. Uh, we will talk to Lucas Sims soon as well on the show. And we'll go over some teams that have either clinched playoff spots or the, the Dodgers clinching another division. We'll get to that soon, too. First, me. needless to say, I didn't uh, I didn't feel great after that. <laughs> <laughs> little bit shell shocked like you know what just happened um i'd had a run of a lot of good games against the cardinals up to that point in, including the previous year in the postseason but and and some in this postseason but then when he hit that yeah it was almost it was kind of hard to uh just kind of hard to wrap your head around just kind of hard to believe for a little bit uh but but you know we were all kind of collectively hanging our heads and, and you're right like so we got on the plane and um you know i we're all bummed first of all because now we got to travel to st louis and you know like all these road trip plans change if something like that happens. So we get on the plane and, uh, you know, the pilot gets on and I don't know, maybe we're an hour into it, a half hour into the flight. And he's like, you know, if you look out to your left, you can see whatever, whatever. And if you look out to your right, we can see uh, Albert Pools' home run still flying by the airport. <laughs> and I was like. I was sitting and, and like, you know, because I'm still like in my own, you know, everyone's going to be moping and I'm still moping and everything else. And, and I'm like, I think, did I just, did that just happen in my head? Did that actually happen? <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I looked around and everyone's looking at me. I'm like, that, that actually happened. Right. So anyway, uh, long story short, Brad Osmus told the, uh, the pilot to say it. And at some point, not long after that, you know, I, I just started laughing because I mean, it was, it was basically classic Brad Osmus, but also like, I mean, what, you know, what, what else can you do at that point? And, and I think the, the, when I started laughing, like everybody else started laughing, it was one of those deals where it really loosened up the team. And I thought at that point, I was like, man, you know, that was one of the best things he could have done for me, for our team, for everything else. And then sure enough, game six, the Royals walk goes out there and shoves. And, and now back to foul territory. Back live all week here, FT Live, taking over Cincinnati at Great American Ballpark, and we've added a friend to the set, Lucas Sims from the Cincinnati Reds joining us right now. Lucas, what's up, man? What's up, y'all? Good to be here. <laughs> Thanks for having me. FT Live debut? Yeah, yeah. What's going on? <laughs> How's <laughs> life? How's life in the playoff race and, and the weekend for you guys, obviously taking on the Mets, but also I'm sure keeping an eye on you know the other billion teams that are in the uh, wild card chase? It's fun. It's um. It's a fun time. Uh, you know, there's there's nothing better than meaningful September baseball. Um, a lot of scoreboard watching. Yeah. Um, you know, every, every pitch, everyone's on edge, and and um, it, it's it's fun. It's fun. Are we not going to bring up the fact that he got ready in like three seconds? Yes, he did. No, he we did. should. We should. It he was did. impressive. That yeah. was phenomenal. That was phenomenal. You can tell he's a reliever. This is bullpen life we're, yeah. we're used to it quick and, and mid-game adjustment like a like a tiny like just drop that down a little bit okay right yeah there. sorry about that Beautiful. there it is yeah, <laughs> in-game adjustments working. it's working help him out danny yeah i'm, I'm gonna he knows gonna. who you people are people helping people is danny grave still a big deal in the bullpen these days he's a reds hall of famer yeah there exactly of course yeah, he's, a, you, he's a big deal so lucas uh, you're considered probably a veteran of this team you've been around a long time what is the the feeling with uh, I mean, it's a young team, obviously. Right. Like you having to keep those guys uh, motivated. I know it's not necessarily have to keep them motivated, but they're in a playoff race. Do they even know that they're in this kind of race? Uh, I think it's. I think you know earlier. Uh, you know, everyone was just kind of, um, 
you know, let, letting it fly. And I think, I think it's, uh, I think it's important to kind of remember like, like how we got in this position. Um, and, and the guys have done a great job of nobody feels like they're pressing. Um, you know, every, everyone, we, we keep it loose. Uh, there's, there's such a good chemistry uh, between uh, not just the older, like the old guys and the young guys. There's, we have such a good cu- uh, clubhouse, um, just a, a fun group of guys. And, and it's fun to go out there and, and uh, you know, go between the lines with those guys every day. What is going to be the, the difference to get you guys over the hump to get in the playoffs? Is there one thing or is it the same thing, just keep going? Because I know David Bell talks all the time. I let them get to do what they want, but at the same time I want them to play hard. What is going to make you get over that hump? Because, you know, Pirates and the Cardinals, they've, they've played well against you guys this year. So what's the one thing you guys got to do to get you in those playoffs? I, I think it's just sticking, sticking to our game. Um, you know, we don't need to do anything different per se. Um, hammer out the fundamentals, play hard. Um, pick each other up, um, you know, kind of just continue doing all the things that we've, we've been doing. Um, and just knowing that, you know, that that's, that's good enough. Um, you know, not trying to be, um, any, anybody that we're not, if, if that makes sense. Um, you know, America's team though, you're American. Team. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, Is that still a thing here. Is that still being talked yeah, about? Yeah, we're going to take that and run with it. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, just, just playing hard, hammering out fundamentals and, and playing our game um, and, and not pressing, you know, along to that point, how has Joey Votto been as a leader? Is, has he helped, you know, not only the position players, but the pitchers too, as well, because he's probably, he's, he's the guy that's been here forever. I played with him. He was a leader then. And, and I think now, seeing what you guys are doing, he has to have some kind of say going, going forward here. Of, of course. Uh, you know, when, when one nine uh, speaks up, everybody listens. No Everyone's doubt. all ears. Um, you know, he's got maybe slight exaggeration, but more experience and probably our entire clubhouse combined. <laughs> um, so, yeah, with, with that means, like, um, anytime he speaks up and, and um, has anything to say uh, – you know, especially those young guys, they're just sponges. And, and honestly, even the older guys, um, you know, he's, he's so, um, you know, he's, he's, he's our heartbeat. Oh, is, yeah. is he the number one comedian in the clubhouse still? It's, it's, uh, it's witty. It's quick. Yeah. It's, um, Sometimes it's kind of weird. You're right. Though. It's, it's real quick. And it's, it takes you a second. Like, Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's, uh, hundred percent. It's, um, he's, he's very quick. Um, we got we got a lot of jokesters in there. Um, you know, some of those young guys aren't uh, they're, they're not afraid to speak up either, which is which is great. I think it's I think it's good to uh, you know sometimes the you know Todd you you guys have been in clubhouses yeah. like generally you know kind of the sometimes the older guys pick on the uh, pick on the younger guys, yeah. but you it's know changed, some of our younger right? guys aren't a, aren't afraid to to you know clap back a little bit, okay. and it, it makes it fun. Um, like I said, we just we have such a good time and and. Uh, you know, off the field, um, you know, hanging out. And, and then uh, I, I think that's really important to translate between the lines too. Have you done um, team hangouts? Like, have you guys had time for anything like that? Someone has someone over at the house or big dinners on the road? Just, yeah, dinners on the road. Yeah. Um, you know, a, a lot of it is, um, you know, I've, I've been in clubhouses before too, where, uh, you know, once that, once that last out made, it's shower, spread, you know, take it to the house. But, um, you know, this group, we, we enjoy – hanging out after games awesome. in, in the clubhouse and, and talking about the game or, or just talking about whatever's, whatever's going on. Um, you know, I think that's, like I said, I, th- I think that's, that's a big part in what translates on the field. Who's the guy in the bullpen that keeps everybody loose? Is that you or we got a lot of, we got a lot, maybe me. Um, and give us some examples if you can, <laughs> not to put you on the spot. And then Danny, gonna... maybe you can help us out too. Like give us an example of, of how it used to get done. Oh boy. Oh boy. I would love to hear those stories. Isn't this guys... a family show? <laughs> it's not. It's actually very much not. Oh, it's not. <laughs> we drop F bombs, we do what we want. How's so, Ian yeah. Gabo out there? Is he is he not out there? He's the he greatest just chilling. He's uh he's chilling. Yeah. He's the greatest pumpkin seed flicker I've ever seen. Oh, oh yeah. The, <laughs> um, I remember that. Probably hit it 40, 50 feet. Um, um, careful. It's every, tendonitis in the finger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's um we got such a special group down there. Um you know, but we kind of uh, jokingly call Buck the grandpa. Um, of course. Uh, Ian keeps it loose. I, I try my best to kind of keep it loose, um, at least early before, uh, you know, before the. Before you uh, got to lock in. Yeah, before the, before, uh, you know, 
starts speeding up a little bit yeah. and it's like all right you know time to time to get this thing rolling and then everyone kind of locks or uh you know does goes their own separate ways but at the same time uh there's still that that fun way of just being able to kind of crack a joke here and there or a jab yeah, or whatever. You're getting excited. I could tell you. No. Not stop moaning about yeah. this. Hey, live out pitching nervous, in bullpen. Hey, was like, can I come tonight to yes, the bullpen? Exactly. And <laughs> you're more than welcome. <laughs> that would be <laughs> great. We would love to have you down there. Oh, dude, that would be so cool. Give uh, Matt Tracy, give him some help answering the phone sometimes. I love it. Sometimes <laughs> it slips, <laughs> slips past him every once in a while. So I'm sorry, Trace. My dream job <laughs> in, in, as a big league staffer would be to answer phones in the bullpen i'm not even joking like i i would love to be a bullpen coach you could do that i feel like you submit your resume you'd probably get a job <laughs> well i mean i kind of like what i'm doing now right no, you just wear your red jacket you can go anywhere you yeah. want here you're good, yeah right <laughs> see okay, royalty around, around these parts listen no. you can be on the other side it don't matter no. hey what was your impressions of uh, ellie de la cruz when he first came in man i i remember i was like here we go man just blown away special yeah special um you know talent like that is uh it's I really it just the way the way he runs, the way he moves, the way he throws, um, you know, the the talent that the, the tools are all there and um, you know, he's he's gone through some scuffles, but um he's he's so young and um, you know, this league is this league is so challenging, but um, you know the the tools are there and, and he's got such a good uh, you know, head on his shoulders that um you know he's he's going to be something special for for a long time to come. What's he doing in the clubhouse? Is he loud already? I mean, he stands out. He can't go anywhere. Like he's the guy, right? In baseball, sometimes we he's, talk about like, would that guy get noticed on the streets in New York City? Ellie De La Cruz getting noticed anywhere because of how he looks. I mean, he's huge. Probably, yeah. He's a monster. No, he's pretty quiet. Um, you know, he goes about his business. Um, he, he takes takes the field and uh, just just plays hard. Um, he's he's got a great personality. He's funny. He gets along with everybody um and and we, we definitely enjoy having him on our team does, cool. it, does it feel like you guys are playing in the playoffs right now like tonight right oh, you yeah. got a series against the twins does oh, it yeah. feel like the postseason because that's what sometimes we'll say on our show like playoffs are now for you guys like you got to win these games to get in yeah yeah no doubt um it was do or die this is um like i said this is this is why we do it um the the ch- we're trying to just enjoy the process, enjoy the ride, um, leave everything out there. And, and you know what, if it's, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Um, but we just kind of control what we can control. And, and, um, and I guess it's cliche, but we're just, we win tonight and we'll deal with tomorrow, tomorrow. You grew up a Braves fan? I did. Right. Yeah. I grew up just outside near Atlanta. So. Near Turner field. You yep. grew up? Yep. Okay. So have you observed what's going on over there? Yeah. Do you st- do, yeah. How do, do, how do still, they do it? I mean, that's how are they doing? Yeah. How, no. How, no. How do they keep doing it? How every do they year? do it every a year? A guy gets injured. If somebody comes up and dominates, I, that's my question would be. I know what they do. How they, do they always they do it? They find all the good young dudes. They lock them up for twenty years. <laughs> they can't go anywhere. They're all playing together. You played there. I did play yeah, there. You played yeah. there for a little bit. So like, what, right? I missed you know, Turner. I missed Turner by one year. Oh okay. um, I played at Turner. And it was a playoff you, year, you right? You were there. Turner. Yeah, I played at Turner. 17, and, and the 18. One before, right? <laughs> That's what I was, I was going to get. He played at the one before Turner. I played Turner. at Fulton County, too. I, so. I, wanted, to, I, wanted, I wanted to make sure everybody knew about that. A couple generations. That, yeah. generations. Yeah. A couple <laughs> generations. So they were in the playoffs. Was 18 the first year they made it in the next run? Or were they there in 17? Were you on? 18. It was 18, 18 was the was. first year. So that was like the – that's what started all I this. only had a little a little bit of little time taste. there in 18. Yeah. Um, then I got traded over here at the All-Star break. Or deadline, I should say. Did you see it coming? over there you know like the this run of dominance because you you were around some of those guys that are now leading the way right right, right. i i came up with uh ozzy me and ozzy debuted the same day um same you know, day wow yeah oh, august cool. 1st um mm-hmm. uh ronald and riley and max and um mentor uh a lot of those guys played yeah. with a lot of those guys um and and Snit, I had Snit was, was my first AAA manager. Well, he's been as well like as my first big. Years. Years. Yeah. He's been with the Braves uh, for seventy years. Yeah, not yeah, yeah. And so, so. Um, you know, it's uh, it's it's. Yeah. Who'd you get traded I, for? Do you remember? Adam Duvall. Oh, that's right. Adam Duvall, uh, twenty eighteen. Pretty good um, trade. Well, how well, was how won a World Series? Duvall, too. no doubt. Yeah. How was uh, high school sports? Was it very competitive where you were? Basically? Oh yeah. Was there any big names that you played against? Or oh yeah, like Olson was right down the road. Oh really? Uh, wow. He went to my rival school, and uh, oh, thanks for bringing that up. We lost. To them. Oh no. <laughs> we, we lost to them my uh, my senior year, our senior year state championship. Ah, oh, that's on me. Man. Were you hitting? Sorry. It's all good. Too? 
Yeah, yeah I was. Yeah, I was. Were Not as good as Olsen. Did Olsen yeah. do anything that game? Yeah. You guys must have done your homework. Uh, no, I didn't no, 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 no. I didn't do any. You All right. Hey. I just make shit up. It was I a very it. small field. Yeah. <laughs> off in the okay. bat. Uh, oh, this was off you then. He clipped oh, me. No, oh, no. Me metal, bat, metal bat. Metal yes. bat. Uh, and then game two, he hit a nuke. Oh, no, man. Yeah. Jesus. But it's all good. Why do you pitch around Matt uh, in high school? Like, well, I had success against him. You yeah. did, right. I had success The rest him. of your teammates who weren't going to be big leaguers, oh. I'd be like, yeah, let, guys, let's do it. <laughs> Even else. him probably as a hitter in high school, you put four up, I would assume. You probably could hit. I was okay. okay. I was okay. You weren't Michael Lorenzen? No, like, no, 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 no. No. It was it was none. <laughs> not not quite like that. I enjoyed it, but, uh, yeah, now, um, you know, I'm, I'm not too upset that the uh, – the DH, the universal DH. Yeah, yeah you're okay with that. There's yeah. there's certain guys that I just I, I don't stand a chance. No. <laughs> We're family and friends. All everyone around you was Braves fans, right? When you grew up, pretty much. So pretty much. If the Braves and Reds met up in the postseason, Ooh. how would that go? Oh. Like we have, we've had Chaz McCormick on, and he's big Philly area guy, mm-hmm. and he was almost half joking that he's like losing friendships because he's like got friends texting him in the World Series, being like, That's "Whatever, a lot dude, of money. I, I still got a root for yeah, Philly." No, that's true. Like, Fuck you! I thought we were friends. And no, like, no, no, no. That's they, not money for a ticket, they, right? You're, you're playing for free, sure. that yeah. Day. For a um, ticket, yeah. Well, he wasn't giving them out to his friends. Yeah, if they're not saying, rooting for him. But that's what I'm saying. Like, if you're not, I'm not giving a bunch of friends tickets. If I'm playing in a World Series in my hometown, yep. go pay for them yourself, dude. I got better things to, to worry about. <laughs> you don't give out tickets. I mean, my family, right? Like, you can't give tickets to all your. Well, friends. you're only allotted a certain amount. You're, you to, are, but oh. you can exchange from other oh, people okay. aren't using true, them. True, but it, Todd's you know, come deals. Out of your no, I had to. Yeah. It comes out of your pocket, though. Yeah, it does. Yeah, that yeah. ain't good. Bro, I had guys when I when when I was on the Mets or vice versa. When I was in the Yankees, we played the Subway Series. Mm-hmm. I give tickets to my boys or whatever. Say I'm on the Yankees. Mm-hmm. We're playing the Yankee Stadium. They're in the family section wearing Mets shit. I'm like, dude, you can't do that. No, he goes, can't. I'm a Mets fan. You don't want me there. Just tell me. I'm like, all right, I'm sorry. Whatever. Then it's like they lose loyalty, though. It, it's good unloyal, loyalty, and vice like, versa. Come on, and man. I'm like, oh, but that's how they were, and I love them to death because that's how real they were. There's nothing I can yeah. do. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> those are real ones, but real, real. Is also, you might tell them to maybe kick rocks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because yeah. the friends like, don't go oh, and their family. You know, yeah, exactly. All of a sudden, your phone starts blowing up. You're like, yo, I haven't talked to you in like six months. What are you talking? No, I'm a terrible texter anyway, so I would. Yo, you're one of those you don't guys. respond. I, I'm I'm not great at it. Uh, just it's a good excuse though. Like, I, I'm just I just a lot of times at the field I, I just don't get on my phone and then by the time I, I get to a text it's normally 10:30 11 o'clock and nobody really wants to yeah. begin a text so I'll either I'm more of a call more of a call guy yeah. so like I, I call the people I need to call and then um, that's old school. Yeah, no. It's, I just, I don't oh, know. I, I kind of like saying it. It's just 29, right? season. There's so much, yeah, there's nice. so much going on that I just, I try and just lock in the, so to much, what I'm doing. So and much then. working out, right? Dude, your quads, <laughs> like quadzilla. How, oh, you man, can see them on the TV how screen. How look at those things. Your legs, Holy shit. Dude. They're like catfish uh, bellies. They, look they at those damn things. God almighty. They've taken a hit. Hit. From... Uh, yeah, I had back surgery last year. So I, I I'll take to, that hit and put him on my leg. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't get to uh, uh, ne- never miss leg day. What's never, the go to? Are day. you just crushing regular squats? You like sumo squats? Like, give me what's the. Well, I had go-to? to make some adjustments, right? With okay. The, with the uh, with the program, but not a lot of uh, single leg stuff. Um, I don't know uh, lunges and um, RDLs and all. Awesome. I just got the, the gauntlet, the whole gauntlet. <laughs> I like that it. makes me tired. And you just had a baby girl in October, right? I did. She's going to be two. Oh, She's wow. going to be two. And Last then we're, October. Um, two awesome. in this October. Does, now, does that and change you a little bit from a ball player coming home? You had a bad outing. You see the baby girl. It's, it's all right. It, it, That's how it, it was is. for me. It Same is. Thing. It's, yeah. um, it just puts it into a completely different perspective. No right? doubt. They, um, at that age, they got no clue. Yeah. Um, they just know daddy's home. and Daddy, oh, uh, nothing. yeah. Nothing. It, it, Everything's it okay. It definitely helps. It definitely helps. Um you know, you know, especially in the in the bullpen, like uh, a lot of times you're throwing, and it's it's those meaningful innings, yep. and, and it, it you, you you do your best to you know um, come out on top, and hopefully more times than not you do. But it's inevitable. This game's uh, yeah. this game is unbeatable, um, and so yeah, just keeping that in perspective, it's it's uh, it's big time for sure. Well, good. Cool hanging out with you, man. It was great to have you. Yeah, on I enjoyed here. it. This was yeah. fun. Thank fun. you, man. Fun. Yeah. Sorry, I've been fiddling with this 
No, yeah, no, you're tough. good. The time. Like, there's no rules here. No one cares. You yeah, can do whatever. I didn't <laughs> you know? help out good enough. I, I tried to get that mic. Yeah, it's Danny's it's fault. It's yeah. Danny came in the, and tried cleaning up his bases, loaded jam, and didn't do it. It's yeah, okay. Don't leave your runners out there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. We'll go over some preview of tonight. So, what, what, is there more behind him getting fired that we don't know about? Eric, it all comes back to ownership, in my opinion. And we have to view Heim Bloom from the prism of when he was hired and what the expectations were. And they said they wanted him to build a consistent winner. And they wanted to do it cheaper. That was the implicit message when you hire someone from Tampa Bay. They wanted a more efficient payroll. They got that. They didn't get the consistent winner, at least not yet. And certainly, the past two trade deadlines have not been Heim Bloom's best. There have been some other decisions that have been questionable. Well, welcome to being a general manager. That happens. No general manager is perfect. No team is perfect. It's just the way the game is. Could he have made some better decisions? Absolutely. And he would probably be the first to tell you that. But again, I come back to ownership. And ownership was the force behind the Mookie Betts trade, which of course created the negative perception of Bloom in the first place. He had to trade Mookie Betts. The entire industry knew it. He didn't get enough from Mookie Betts because you cannot get enough from Mookie Betts. Not going to happen. And as Andy McCullough wrote in The Athletic, he was kind of doomed from that moment in certain respects. But to your point, Eric, they have done what was asked of him, which was to build a better infrastructure, which was develop the farm system in a much better way. They now have some young players coming. We've seen some of them in the last couple of weeks. They have a core developing that's going to be kind of intriguing for years to come. And he said it in his statement. There are great things ahead for the Red Sox. And I believe that. They're going to have to do some things in free agency and spend some money in ways that ownership hasn't done of late, especially on pitching. So, sure, Bloom is the sacrificial lamb here. And... You can make a case always to let someone go. I understand that. But his mission, as dictated by ownership, was in many respects fulfilled. And yet, this is the decision they come to. And now back to foul territory. All right, so first off, we're going to close up the poll results on the team in the National League that fans don't think is going to make the postseason. And I'm just going to say it. It's ah. messed up. The leader of the pack right now by a good chunk is Cincinnati. Well, they're being honest. That, that's their honest opinion. Yeah. You can't be mad at the, the, the fans for doing that. It's Reds one, Cubs two. Cubs are close behind. Diamondbacks though. three. They think the Marlins are in. I mean, hey, the Marlins just swept up the Braves this weekend. It's impressive. And it's, it that's, it's easy for people to think that they're in now because they swept the Braves. Up. Yeah, of course. That's a good call. All right, yeah. let's see how we do on our predictions for tonight specifically. Our BetMGM locks and Danny's first foray into this. So first off, let's backtrack to Friday. How would you do Friday, by the way? I didn't check, I, honestly. I, I don't think I did well. No. no. Neither did I. Ah, I was taking it. They won by two. Yeah, yeah, they won by, by half two. Point, man. You got hooked. I Yanks won. I was trying to buy up. That was the first time I missed on, on wow. buying down Cole K. Cole had like four Ks. Four? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it wasn't his Against best K Pittsburgh. there. No, it wasn't. Pittsburgh's making better contact lately. I'll give it to them. And Kratz obviously won. We're still in good shape. Above 500. Well above uh, making money. Okay. Four Look figures. At you guys, yeah, man. not bad. That's real. We go dollar by dollar because there's a lot of bullshit when guys pick, do their picks. This is real. So let's do our locks for tonight. Let's Your go. pick is. Oh, my pick is uh, I'm going red money line and both teams scoring three or more runs. Oh, okay. I like that. So it's going to be a lot teams, of runs scored. Yeah, a lot of runs scored. And, three and, plus. Yeah, and the reason I say that because you look at September's games, both teams have played 16 games, 14 of those 16, three runs or more. Oh, we did for it for both homework teams. too, baby. I love it. Yeah, dude. And it's plus 275, and I'm betting $100 on this. I this like is, that. This is big money and tonight. And you feel it right now. It's hot. It's, it's Cincinnati. I might, I might have to the, run with that one yeah. too. I am. I'm going to smack the ball out of the small park today. Mine's pretty pretty a little simpler. I'm going Reds plus one and a half. It's at okay. 125. So I don't know if they're trying to bait me here, but I think the Reds <laughs> are going to time for the Reds to go on a little run here. So plus one and a half Reds 
Um, three hundred to win or three seventy five to win three hundred. So I'm I'm feeling pretty froggy today. I got plus money too. I'm going Reds plus one and a half. So in case it's close and they lose by a run, I'm okay. And under thirteen and a half. Oh, at plus one ten. Really? Yeah. So so I can see some runs, but I'm going under fourteen runs. I guess. Okay. Yeah, all right. Let's see what happens. Six so. five game. Reds win. Um and uh, so those are your picks. All, so we're all clean. Yeah, we're all hey, board. We're all going obviously Reds on a Reds pick it up game. Today. Let's go. Tonight. Oh, great job there, Claudia. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> There's the tips. Oh, There's my God. Look at those hair. Frosties. You know, she warned me about this. She's very good at what she does. <laughs> I love it. Wow, Danny. That's some flow right there, huh? Yeah, that, <laughs> that is, is some beautiful. Flizzy. Scott looks a little upset on his, but that's okay. Me? No, I'm <laughs> trying to bait somebody getting. I'm serious right now. Calling you on an all-in. My computer's bugging right now, but there you go. It's the first bet offer, fifteen hundred bucks uh, paid back in bonus bets. If you don't win, you can look it up. We've got it for you on Twitter. Um, gambling problem or concern? Call one eight hundred Gambler. Uh, fifteen hundo running right now as football season was just getting going. A lot of sad people actually when I was entering um, the area yesterday watching the Bengals fans. Oh man, walking home. So it happened. Tough. Also, you got you got Ellie tonight. I got Ellie. I got. I'm, I'm doing a prop bet. I'm doing yeah. Ellie for a home run at plus five fifty. Little Let's hundo go. to win five fifty. Um, yeah, I, I I think it's his turn. I haven't seen a home run in a while. Scoop one around that foul pole, and and away those red legs go. Mm-hmm. Let's see it. All right, we'll yeah. be here all week too for a little Reds Twins action. TJ Friedel is going to join us at the top of our number two. That'll be on the foul territory YouTube channel. Pablo Lopez at 2:25 Eastern Time from the Minnesota Twins is going to join us, so we got a lot of hangouts to do with the Reds. A couple things we'll look forward to also in our number two. We'll go over some of the teams that clinched from the weekend, like the Rays and the Orioles and the Dodgers with the division. And the Rays seem like they have their ballpark figured out, but not much has changed. So we'll go over that too. They're staying in St. Petersburg, at least that's what it sounds like. So I got some thoughts there as a Florida resident. You we'll, think we we'll can get have into that? Another Danny Graves pitcher tomorrow would be nice too. Uh, yeah, please, Danny. <laughs> a different one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll be right back on the foul territory YouTube. See you in a sec. Friedel, outfielder on the Cincinnati Reds. TJ, great to have you on, man, making your FT Live debut. Yeah. How you doing? Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Appreciate it, dude. It's great to be here. And also, we brought some some friends that are known around these uh, streets pretty good here. <laughs> some local faces, pretty pretty known. <laughs> right? <laughs> do you guys, do the players in the club, especially with a team like yours that's so damn young, do they know anything about the history of the Reds? Oh, yeah. yeah. They do? I mean, you're you're pretty well informed in this, this historic franchise from the beginning, all the special moments. And, uh, I mean, they got this Reds Hall of Fame over here, which is like unbelievable. I've been through it a couple times now. Um, you know, and I think just baseball names, baseball players know baseball names. It's, yep. it's, it's pretty known. So, yeah. Do you have like anybody in mind that, you know, besides <laughs> us two, is there any like <laughs> Reds Hall of Famers you're like, man, I, I can't wait to meet them. And then did you end up meeting any of them yet? I think for me personally, uh, it was pretty cool 
having ED and Barry oh, Larkin. Because when I signed here in 2016, those two were actually uh, like coordinators helping out uh, all through minor league camps, minor league spring trainings. So, like ED was the outfield coordinator. Uh, Lark was the infield coordinator. So, I mean, they were all throughout minor league spring training. Then they'd come around during the season to every affiliate and kind of stop by. And, you know, for me, it was kind of like, listen to them, like, damn, like, that's pretty sick. <laughs> there ain't many people cooler than Eric Davis no, either. No, I mean, he's as, he's as cool as a pill, man. He's, he's coming in with the with the Adidas old school yeah. jumpsuits on and everything. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was my mentor coming up, man. There is nobody better than him, He man. was stupid talented, yeah. too. Yeah. Like, I mean, only injuries held him back. Well, you, talk about Acuna so much. I mean, Eric Davis was that guy before he got hurt. Yep. The, the guy with the stolen bases and the power. power. It's so, crazy. Where were you in 2015 when this dude won the All Star Game Home Run Derby? Uh, I was still in college. I signed in 16, so that was my sophomore year of college. But I remember watching it. I never would have thought I'd be playing on my on that field as my home field. But uh, I remember watching it. You know, I remember the celebration, the bat flip. Like, I, isn't I that still, cool to hear? Dude? You still get goosebumps. You get goosebumps. I, I get goosebumps. Yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> just talking about it. I yeah. get goosebumps. Just, yeah. just, no, just like you. I, thank you so much. Along those lines, I brought up my first time doing the radio. I saw you before the game, and I want everybody to know this. I came to you, and for some reason, I just had a premonition. I'm looking to the gods. I'm like. This guy's doing it today. I, I said, I'm yeah. calling his shot. He's hitting a homer That's today I to, right, that, to yeah. right field. Yeah. And my man gave me some love after the game. Tell, tell us about how that all happened. No, I, got, I got to get some love here for you. No, it was sweet. We were in Baltimore, and, and like you said, we were walking the bus and uh, catching the bus, and he kind of just stopped and, and looked at me and made, made a comment. He's just like, I got a good feeling about you today. I think you, you, you're my pick to click. You're going deep. And in my mind, I, I don't know if I was swinging a good bat at that time or <laughs> maybe struggling the past couple of games. But some of mine that's like – uh I hope he's right. <laughs> that, hey, that'd be pretty sweet. He had Didn't a really good game. At- yeah, he, I, well, yeah, I was looking for him. For he like pointed 10 to me in the stands, like, yeah. like I felt like what's his name that hit the home run um, with the with the, um, what's the movie? He broke the bat, hit the home run. Broke the bat. Oh man, what's that movie? The guy hit the home run, he broke the bat. Whatever. The natural. The natural. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I felt like that. Guy. Right. Pick me a winner, Bobby. Yeah. Like, and I picked him the winner right there. So it was. It, it took was, me a while to figure it out, but yeah. It was yes. pretty sweet. I remember I was sitting after I hit it, and I was like walking through. I did the whole Viking thing, then got back to the helmet rack. Let's put my stuff away. And I'm looking all through the press box behind the plate. I'm like looking through every single press box. Looking. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just see him standing up. He's waving. I was going down. like that. That's my guy. <laughs> like, That's my guy. It was a great. So, it was fun yeah. to watch, man. That was sweet. Didn't that happen last year with? with one of your teammates with like Larkin gave a tip to someone. Is that ringing a bell? Yes. Um, yes, probably they did. And he did you know the same thing. He about? pointed up. Yeah. Yeah. Pointed up to Barry. Barry said something before you know the game to him. About, right? I, I know some, exactly what you're talking about. Some kind of juju around. You just feel it. And yeah. It just yeah. happens. Something so with the broadcasters though. Yeah. yeah dude. I and remember you, that clearly. You just get that little inkling. You, and you yeah. can't, you can't yeah. just be like, since you're on the show, you're going to hit one. Nice. I was going to say, what do you got? I got, I got, I got a double and a single for you today. If you want the truth. I'll take that. I can't, I can't, the, can't, can't be the pick the click. No, nah, it's, that's easy money. Get a dive and catch. <laughs> no, yeah, that's easy money. I ain't got to worry about that. <laughs> no, that, that's I mean, good that's, stuff. Yeah, I've done that quite a bit. So. <laughs> I feel like that's on tap too. So how's, how's the energy in the clubhouse right now? You guys are half game out. You guys are pushing. You guys probably in the beginning of the year, probably like, Hey, Let's just play it out, see yeah. what happens. Yeah. And now, boom, you're right in the thick of it with 12 games left with a good Twins ball club, man. Mm-hmm. Is it one game at a time? Is it, yeah. hey, man, you need to do it? No. Do you have to stay in that realm that you guys always have? No, that's exactly it. I mean, like you said, the beginning of the season was like, you know, we all got the same goal, same mindset. Like, for us, it's never been a rebuild kind of year. It's like, no, like, we got a good ball club. We got a lot of good guys. Like, let's go out there, play each game hard, and we'll see where we're at at the end of the season. That's kind of been the mindset taking it one day at a time, put your head down, go to work. Um, and, you know, now we're here. We're half game out, and, and it's it's a crazy tight race in this wild card right now. But you can't ask for any better position to be in than, than every single inning, every single out, every single pitch matters. And were you offended you at the beginning of the year because you were with this team since the jump and a lot of the guys got promoted and have joined as the season has gone on? Were you offended that – You know, like a lot of people predicted the Reds to be towards the bottom of the division. I mean, and some of it has to do with, yeah, like they were like, oh, there's there's a ton of talent coming up, but Mm -hmm. it's not happening yet. Do you see any of that or hear any of that and go like, screw you, we're better than you think? Well, you know, I think last year was tough. Like there's no denying. Yeah, of course. You're losing 100 games no matter what's going to be tough. You know, battling injuries, trading guys away, beginning season, deadline. Um, You know, kind of the second half of the season was we were just really young, had guys battling injury, trying to find that identity. Uh, and, you know, for us at the beginning of this year in spring training, you, you're obviously going to see that. It's, it's all over social media. It's everywhere.
time when we were talking, it, the conversation was great because I'm like, are you sure you're not from New Jersey? You know, <laughs> he's got that coy attitude, you yeah. know, and yeah. Well, he coached the Nets. Oh, yeah. yeah. So he's got a little jersey in him. Yeah, No yeah. doubt. Yeah, no doubt. Awesome. But I loved every side. He's told me he had a place in Lavalette, which is 20 minutes from me. Um, just a beautiful human being. He's one of kind. He's awesome. <laughs> you ever, have you ever family parties that's been around those? No, he uh, – we actually just had, a like, a big family reunion in Pittsburgh when we played in Pittsburgh. Yeah. It was actually on my birthday, and we had a lot of family come out, and he was going to try and make that as well. But summers are just – super hectic for him recruiting and then starting up school again and getting the guys on campus. So this time of year gets really intense. So it's hard for him to kind of get out, and get around. That is kind of a big deal, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> getting school going again. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you got everyone coming in, getting everyone settled and then adjusting to practice. So I'm sure he's got a handful. Yeah. So why'd you cut the locks, by the way? Oh, dude, I was so over it. Yeah. I was so I, I had that long hair since COVID. I actually started growing it out at the alternate site in Mason in 2020. And I'm like, I'm just going to let my hair grow out and see where we go. And I let it grow out, and I liked it. Tw- had a 21 all last year. And then, like, I always played with it down. And then this year in spring training, I was talking with Fraley because he wore it up in a bun. And so I'm like, yeah, I'm going to try it. So I put it up in a bun, and I played with it up. And I'm like, ah, I kind of miss, like, playing with it up and stuff. And then as the season went on, then it got hot, and it got humid, and I felt like a dog in the summer. And I was, like, got to the point where I'm just like, I want to go back to my short hair. So I just did. That's a great explanation, by the way. <laughs> I, I was just—I I, I was hoping it wasn't because you went over ten. No, you're in a slump and no, that no, no. All the time, though, all the guys. time. Yeah, no doubt. I just—I don't think my hair causes my performance. Yeah, I yeah. I, Unless I, it I, was getting in the way of your eyes. Uh, yeah, okay, that's, that's very true. <laughs> Unless it was physically affecting yeah, my performance, yeah, then yeah. that's a different story. But I just—I was so over it, and I had been over it that I just did it. Some relievers have told me I've, that it's distracting for hitters if they've got super long hair and it's. You know, like the Josh Hader thing. I, I don't know if that necessarily means anything, but they at that. least think that. Like you could hide the ball a little bit longer yeah, by yeah. the long hair. I mean, last year I got a hit by pitch because of my long hair. So oh, did it yeah. hit your hair? Yeah. That's so a first. I was like, <laughs> it, it was crazy. It was at the end of the season, we we're playing the Brewers, and I think Ashby, this lefty from Milwaukee, was throwing. Yep. He throws fuzz balls, and and I remember he came up and in with one, and I came here and I tried to get out of the way, and you know I didn't feel anything, and so I kind of you know was on the ground. And the DB was the replay. He's like, hey, hold up one second. And they're like looking at it. And then he challenges it. Something was up. I'm like, where did that? I would have, it was like 96. I would have felt it if it yeah. hit me. <laughs> like, I would have known if it hit me. And then they're showing it on the big board. And you just see my hair. As I go down, my hair comes out to like here. Wow. And it buzzes my hair. And I looked over at DB. And I'm like, does that count? He's like, yeah, it's on your body. And I'm <laughs> that like, counts. all right. <laughs> then I go down to first base. I'm like, sick. <laughs> That's Proved crazy. on base percentage. It's sick, yeah. Chalk it up. <laughs> That's really funny. Who are you hanging out with? Like when you're on the road after games, like who, who are some of the guys, Matt? Like we've talked about a lot of them are new. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's some turnover. You know, there's some guys that have, that were with you the last, you know, year or so. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, we're all really close, but I, I think like for me, uh, it's, you know, Fraley, Spencer Steer, India, Sinzel. Uh, but like, it's always a mixing group, right? So, like, we'll always go out to dinner. We'll always go do stuff you know, on the road. It's just you unless, you know, you got family or wives in town. Um, but, like, with the road schedule, you just try and get out and do whatever you can, go get food and whatnot. So, uh, you know, we have a really, really close group since spring training as well. Like, we got some new guys in Newman. And, uh, you know, when we had Will Myers. And spring training, there's normally a transition period where it's getting to know guys and it's, like, a little bit of trying to learn who guys are. But I remember in spring training with this group, it was, like, clicked really fast which was awesome so we've been we've been close let me ask you this clicking yeah. real fast how about on the airplanes is there is there any card playing going on on there yeah yeah there's Little, some... what, what type of games you're playing man how, how's that been going for God, you to run those i i used to be the, i yeah any team i was on i used to run <laughs> yeah there's there's some there's some cards playing there's uh omaha okay uh, hold them three five seven um three five seven was the yeah. game yeah now let me ask you this so so people understand three five seven you can bluff here they ask you, you say one, two, three, drop, and out of your three cards you have, or five or seven as the hands go on, yep. you can bluff because three is three will be the wild card. Yep. So three can be any, and then when you have five cards, five, then we have seven, it's a seven. Put the hands out, one, two, three, drop. Are you a bluffer, or are you, are you a guy nah. that, that if, if you have the hand, you're like, all right, you know that guy. If he has the hand, you're yeah. probably going to lose. Yeah, no, if I'm, if, if I'm playing, I'll – play pretty true to my cards okay because you know my heart will start beating and, and then it's, money starts no getting a little face. higher and then it's always and then it's always a time when it's like 
if I bluff, I know I'm going to get called out. And someone's going to hold of course. gas cards. Of so course. it's like, I don't want to risk that. See, I, I was, I was the, the crazy man that would bluff every once in a while. Yeah. And if I got away with it, you like living life on the edge. Yeah, exactly. You're like, You're like let's see him. I'm like, no, I would. I had a better <laughs> never, hand. Get out of here. Never yeah, show yeah. the cards. Never show. Yeah. And then you show the one. You're like, hey man, there you go. I had three aces. Sorry about it. But the other one, now nah, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna muck that <laughs> one. Just give me my money. So sometimes, always. sometimes you keep them honest, and yeah. other times you don't let them see it. No doubt. I respect. No it. doubt. Now is it a bunch of guys playing or no? Um, is it usually the same four or five? Todd six also guys? wants to know There's if he can get in on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just hop on the flight with us next year. Exactly. Uh, yeah, there'll be like, there's a couple of tables. You know, we got some guys playing dominoes. Oh yeah, yeah. So they'll play Latin guys playing then, dominoes. Yeah, yeah, of course. And then we'll Latin get, guys always like, love those dominoes. So I remember like Johnny Cueto. Yeah. Oh my God, he was phenomenal at it. Yeah, no, we got that's uh, we got like some dominoes play. We got a, a table in the back, table in the front. So it's kind of just like a rotation. Guys yeah. hop in and out if you want to play. Some guys yeah. want to sleep. So and that's like show playing or is it three and three? You got the show playing? Yeah, right. yeah. You yeah, want to know what we played? What well, dice? We, well, we used to get. Meal money. You, do, you guys don't get meal money. Not anymore. No, we get ever since COVID, we get like a like a card, like a de- prepaid debit card. Wow, they it's, just, it's big they just loaded up on that. Used so, to be like 108 bucks a day or something. Yeah, so yeah, we would get the. Just, it's more on the food, right? Yeah. Yeah, we would much. get those the, the banks envelopes and with just hundreds in them. So <laughs> we'd get a coin <laughs> and flip the coin. Heads or tails, you go one guy like me and guess Sean Casey, whoever wins that. Ten game roadie, you're you're taking home like oh, twelve hundred dollars. Dude, like it was so <laughs> legit. And dude, we that's that's like high card. I yeah, love that. It even yeah. got so bad that we bought a, a two headed quarter and just wore Casey oh. out. <laughs> wore Sean Casey out. He did not know for the longest time. Hey, it's so two headed quarter, he yeah. didn't catch it. Yes, hey, he did not catch it. Think about this back in the day when you got the envelope, uh uh-huh. Gary Wayhoff, who's the travel Gary, secretary. Yeah. You know, they're not stupid either. So they give you the envelope and it wouldn't be sealed. It's open. So now when you take it out, he's looking for that yeah. tip. Extra long. You got to make sure you yeah. grease him a little bit. Yeah. So now when you get the card, it's like, here, Gary, just take the damn card. That's Here's the card. Here's the card. That's what I would do. Yeah. Take the physical oh, yeah. card. Just have it. Yeah. Waiting yeah. for that grease at the end of the day. So all it's, all, it's bringing, it's bringing back some good old times that we used to love. Dude, how about we play for whatever you're making today and whatever I'm making. We'll flip a coin right oh. now on TV. Right now? Yeah. <laughs> like, me or, so me or TJ? Oh yeah, no, you're no, yeah, I'm not no, in on me and you. Yeah. Or no, no, no. no, I want to no, see this. Hit, I want to see this action. This no, I want to see this. Right <laughs> How about all three of us? We'll I hope take... we have. A, I hope we have a quarter. No, we should. We should. I don't have, have a quarter. At the end of the program, we might have to do. Oh, it. let's do it. We'll do it at the at the very end. We'll he'll, he'll watch it. We'll post it on social. And double check. Double check that it's not a double sided, double headed coin. That's true. Now that he knows. Now he knows. All right. So your your teammate Andrew Abbott's coming through. So oh, we're gonna beautiful. swap you out, but okay. give us one question we gotta ask Andrew. What do we got? Like give, give me you yeah, give me something, something we don't know about. Some, something scouting report wise that we gotta ask him before he gets here. Oh no. Uh, there goes the coin. I'm trying to think. I got it. Oh, ask him how he's doing on his uh on his rookie duty. It's just like bring him bring him uh, bring okay. beer. Okay, okay gotcha, back. yeah. Yeah. Hey, you thanks for coming on, man. We'll do it at the end. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Hey, thanks. <laughs> cool. hey, <good> thanks. Talk. <laughs> thanks for coming hey, on, big dog. Appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it, man. Good, appreciate it, man. good luck. Always fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's awesome. DJ Friedel with us uh, here in Cincinnati. And while we have a moment, um, it is sunny outside. We, we should have a little Shady Rays action. But Let's we go. can tell you about it, okay? The best premium polarized shades out in the biz want you to know about it and also like we've talked about summer is extending these days yeah it is a full-on summer day here right now okay beautiful it is beautiful outside so um make sure you pick up a pair and also if you're like todd father because he'll probably lose a pair on the roof you got the the lost and broken replacements i'm actually my kids actually did they break one already they they hit it on me and now they don't know remember where they put them so You're number two, though. You'll be you'll be actually happy to know. Yeah. AJ lost his pair before you did. Oh, good. Thank God. Okay. Do so they make prescription pair, shades? Uh, they that's might. That's a good question. We'll, I will we'll, get the we'll answer find that, that out before we the show Stay ends. tuned for tomorrow. But for now, hit up ShadyRays.com like like and use like the code FOUL, F-O-U-L, <laughs> for 50% <laughs> off two-plus <laughs> pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250 thousand people and we are ready to go with our next guest here coming up from the cincinnati reds it's andrew what's Abbott. up brother? how are we doing how are live andrew great to have you on man how's yeah, the year thanks going for, thanks for having me it's been going well yeah this is exactly what you expected when you uh i don't know came to spring training it's surreal didn't expect it to be that quick but, yeah uh i'm glad to help any way i can what about on the team side of things too did you think like oh yeah i'm gonna be up in the bigs i'm gonna be towards the top of a rotation for a playoff contender 
you know, it's always an aspiration for all of us playing. Um, it's still a surprise whenever it does happen to you, regardless of when it does. Um, for me, it was, like I said, it was just really quick. Didn't expect it to be in June. But, you know, just go out and continue to do my job day in, day out. When you're a rookie, are there any obligations? Like, you know, do you guys do you have to make sure that everyone's like refreshed and hydrated and everything? Oh, yeah. There's obligations. Yeah. Um, How's that you been know going? What I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I, I kind of like it. It's just like college, you know. Somebody you, you gave do. us an inkling to ask you about how that's been going with the, the getting the beer for everybody and all that stuff. It's, it's, I don't think random, it's, random, I don't think it's that hard to do, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, we bartended a plane to Anaheim. Nice. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I think it's like an initiation kind of thing. It, I think it's kind of cool. Some cool. guys, some guys have some different feelings, but I don't mind it. No, that's fun. Let me What's the this? toughest oh, drink boy. order? I was going to say. Toughest drink order. He wants to know. Toughest there drink order. Yeah, did someone Negroni. He lost it again. Oh, oh, what? what? David that? Bell likes Negronis. Oh, oh Negronis. That was the That's first time drink. I've ever made it. Yep. Can you explain what that oh, is? Class. I have no idea. About it's like a gin it. and vermouth yep. drink oh, and Campari. Yeah, and I can say like it looks easy to put it together, but it tastes it strong. What did he yeah. say? Did he like it or no? He drank one, and then I said, "Hey, you want another?" And he's like, "No, I'm good." But he's he's too kind. Like he's like. Thank you, but um, I yeah. think I'm going to just switch to something else. Yeah, yeah. that's Dave. Uh, that's Dave for sure. <laughs> oh, my God. That's hysterical stuff, dude. Did you have a family trip yet? Do you guys do family trips? Uh, no. No. I okay. don't think we have. Okay. No, yeah, because I remember when we had the family trips, they'd have the kids take uh, the orders from everybody. They, yeah, they, no. they make it fun for the kids. No so. kiddos yet. That's good. Yeah, you're a young team. What am I saying? Them? Probably not, not many. The team not many kids. team wasn't up here yet when yeah. the season started because yeah, they all got called up. Yeah. Is it crazy, though, because you – kind of you know have grown up with with this whole group that they all made it up to the big leagues like in one year's time and that's something going on in the game too i think that you've probably seen there's more aggressiveness in a positive way from front office to be like let's let's try this guy up in the bigs like like andrew rabbit slinging it in the minors um let's not waste those bullets bring it up to the show yeah i think that speaks more to kind of like development in the minors like they the teams kind of see that you're ready and then kind of test it out um and I think the Reds have done a great job with, you know, me, Ellie, McLean, Strand that came over in a trade, you know, Phillips who's starting tonight, those guys that, you know, one, they kind of give you the expectations in spring training. Hey, we want you to be able to do this, and then it leads to this, and, and then that's kind of what we want to see at the big league level. And it kind of starts from the top and then goes all the way down. And, and I pretty much put it out on social media. Yeah. Since I covered him in college when he was at Virginia. Yeah. Oh, shit. And when they drafted him, I said, this dude can pitch in the big leagues now. Yep. Like, he can pitch in the big leagues as a reliever, as a starter, whatever you want him as. I, I saw a lot of them, dude. And, and when they brought him up, he proved me right. So I, it was like I knew something <laughs> uh, at that moment. But he, he's been electric, man. It's been so, so fun to watch uh, his growth here. Did you catch that, by the way? I did. You saw did. that clip? What'd you say? Like a little, like a little smirk, oh, he's always like I'll nice get there quick. <laughs> yeah, he's always exactly. Nice <laughs> he's always nice to the pitchers. That's how it always well, goes. he says that when, when you're at school and then you end up on the team where, you know, he's, he's got some accolades. I was pretty excited. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty excited when the Reds drafted. I was pretty fortunate the way that I came out. It's kind of a, it's a weird story. I wouldn't say like it's, it's a hard story, but COVID kind of threw a wrench in the plan. You know, obviously getting drafted after your junior year. Mm -hmm. So I go back as a fourth year and really in college, if you go back as a fourth year, you really normally don't. You know, you don't get a lot of money. You get a yep. low pick. You know, you don't have that much leverage. But since COVID was around, I was like a COVID junior is what they called it. So mm. I had a lot of leverage, and I started for the first year, and then the Reds chose me. And then after that, it's just been starting. Right, because you could have gone technically another year. Yeah, I could have gone one extra say. one. Obviously, yeah. you didn't want to, but yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, no, yeah, I second round money is good these days, right? Second <laughs> oh, round, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's good these Seven days. Seven days round yeah. money is Whoa. really good. Whoa. What would you say if one pitch you're throwing right now is not on, you're going to be in trouble? For you, I think it's always just my fastball. Your fastball, okay. Yeah, I was I was thinking the changeup, just just the fact because it's a filthy it's a filthy ass changeup. Yeah, I would say no, no. Well, we always as pitchers, and I, I can't speak for you guys because I've only pitched in high school. I wasn't that good, but I think as hitters, we look for the fastball, mm -hmm. and then we react to everything else. Yeah. Now, as a pitcher, you got to establish that fastball first, and then react to everything else as you throw. Yeah. Um, I think it's just always been kind of my uh, my bread and butter. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I got the flow. <laughs> no, you're kind good. Of messing it up you're a little good. bit. Danny's got uh, mine falls yeah. out too. But I think it's just always, and I think hitting's kind of the same thing too. I can't really speak to it. But yeah. okay. uh, like you just always work towards your strengths. Yeah. And a big strength of mine has always been establishing the fastball up. So if I have that in the game and I'm able to get it across, then it kind of opens alleys to everything else. And then guys will chase this. But if I don't have it, then they won't chase it. 
Um, so it just kind of lets me use all my pitches. Have you had any arguments yet with uh, David Bell trying to take you out of a game too early? Like, we got a great <laughs> play-by-play last week. I don't think either of you were on or maybe caught it, but um, Brandon Woodruff mm-hmm. pitched a complete game shutout last week, and he was going over, like, the exact number, I think. Council was like, fine, okay, but you don't get to go over whatever the number was, one, <laughs> 108 or whatever, right? And then he's on the mound like, shit, I got – nine pitches left, whatever, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, fastball, fastball, he gave us yeah. the yeah. whole play-by-play, yeah. play and it was fascinating, just like the back yeah. and forth. And obviously, he's been in the league for a bit, but Good is there ever a time where you're up there and you're like, uh, dude, give me I really more. don't fight when he comes <laughs> out. I think the only time that I did was in Milwaukee. I kind of gave him one of the – like, I was like 110 pitches or something, and I – going against Owen Miller, division rivals, like, hey, I – Oh, he gave, he gave him the hand. I'll give him yeah. this. And then yeah, yeah. afterwards, he was like, I didn't see it. And I was yeah. telling me, I was like, no, I did it. Like, you can go back and look. I did this. Yeah. And you didn't see it, but it was there. And then I ended up getting him out, and then he found out afterwards. But that's probably the only thing that's remotely close. Did he like it? Did he say, like, yeah, give me that once in a while? I'm, I'm, I mean, he he can probably speak to that a lot better. But I would <laughs> I would assume though? that a Who coach yeah. would like competitors and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So Unless they were gung-ho, 100% you're coming out. I don't care what you did. But that's how you get respect. And that's how you, you get a player. Like, yeah. when we had it, it was Johnny Cueto. Mm-hmm. When he came out, hey, 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 oh. and all of a sudden, Dusty Baker, gotcha. Yeah. Like, he understood. Yeah. And that's a relationship that you're starting to have with your manager. And I think it's awesome because that's yeah. that's what you should have. And if you have trust in one person, mm-hmm. you know what? Let him go out there. Let you yeah, go out yeah. there and, and fail and see how what happens. Right. So when I was growing up watching, like, Cole Hamels and Andy Pettit and all them, like, Joe Girardi tries to go to the mound, take him out. He's like, mm-mm, no. <laughs> And then they get to the mound. You know, they have a quick little three-second conversation, and yeah. sh- there you go. Pat yeah. on the butt. See you later. <laughs> That's a good talk. Those yeah. were your guys that you watched? Yeah, I grew favorites? up I grew up watching Cliff Lee mostly. Yeah. Um, Cole Hamels a little bit. But, yeah, I like Pettit's uh, pickoff move. But that's a hard one to get. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think anybody can, can copy that. That was Filthy. pretty legit. Mm-hmm. Were you what? Phillies guy? No, I kind of bounced around. I didn't really have a favorite team. I just had a couple favorite players here or there. Just left-handed pitchers, that's it? Yeah, just one on the side, stayed over here. Always that's a big thing, side. though, now. I, you know, I talk to fans, and sometimes I'm like, there are many young ball players out there who love playing and want to play, like, at the next level, and they just follow players, and they're bigger fans of players than teams. That wasn't a thing years back. It yeah. was like team first, but you know, which I think is good for for yeah. you guys. It kind of confuses things because you know how everybody's getting traded, moving around, yeah. moving pieces yeah. and whatnot. So you know, you're complaining your best friend one year, and then he's on your team the next year, and then you guys don't see each other at all the next year. It's kind of just like, okay, <laughs> I'm just gonna follow you. <laughs> if you hit a guy, and then you guys are talking shit, and then like the next year you're on, you know, you see each yeah. other in spring <laughs> trading. Like, hey, bud, what's up, dude? That's awesome. Well, that happens. That, I remember did, we did, you, did that happen to you? Not to me, but we, we were in Colorado and Scott Sullivan smoked mm. Brian Hunter, caused a brawl. Two weeks later, we traded for Brian Hunter, so we were in the clubhouse. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love it. yeah, I love it, it was cool though. But I mean, because he charged because he had to, not because he wanted to. You know, one of those of situations. But you guys talked it out. Well, this... not me. I, Scott Sullivan was the one throwing blows. Man, he they talked it out. <laughs> they man. did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. By the time I got in there, I was out of breath. Yeah, run, you at the run. Yeah, running from the, from the oh, <laughs> Yeah, and in Colorado, you can't breathe anyways. No, unless you have some of that good stuff that they have up there. But <laughs> <laughs> which I didn't. No, of course. For the not. record, for the record, I sure, didn't. Sure. Hey, let me ask you this: You a big shoe guy? Yeah. Um, the first thing I saw, you had the Jordans on. I got the Jordans on too. These are my uh, sit in the bench shoes right here. Okay. Uh, I'm not pitching tonight, so I'm gonna have a little bit of style on the bench. No doubt. Um, I love it. Nice. I'm more of a I'm a rural country boy, so I like my boots. I have about 15 pairs okay. of boots that I wear to the field every now and then. I can so. say I've never worn boots before. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a love some boots. They're comfy. Yeah. Texas You're, you're guy. a boot guy. Yeah. I yeah. could see you in some boots. I didn't wear. Now, do you tuck the jeans inside of them? Or you let it flow. <laughs> yeah, we don't know. Only if I'm doing yard work. All right, I got. You. All right, hey. hey, I got. You never know. I might move to Texas one day. I got to figure that out. So, <laughs> prices down there are real cheap for some big houses. They, they yeah, yeah, they Not are. Not by me. It's like ten, two times the price. Yeah, we got to get a good plot of land for Todd Father. So. Yeah, don't don't ever tuck in your boots. Don't, <laughs> don't ever tuck don't. That inside. Right. Now. Always over. Uh, you yeah. have to tell me where to buy them too. I got a place. I heard they're expensive. It's all hell getting those damn boots. They are, but I, I got a hook up in Colorado to okay. get you some there baseball. We go. You got a hook up a lot of Colorado things. It seems like. Anyway, get back to let him go get ahead. back to work. But you dude. game ready now though? Uh, I'm that. gonna go and do some stretches and whatnot, yeah. and then come out here and throw. The life of a starting so, pitcher. Hell, hell yeah. 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 
it's an take it easy. When, when do you pitch? When's, when's I think next? Friday. Friday. I would, oh, so, I would assume. So I got good, a little bit of time. We're in a good spot right yeah, now. Yeah. I'm chilling. Yeah. I like I'm, it. I'm a big pom pom guy. <laughs> yeah, three, three days. Take Let's it go. over Friday. Let's see it. Take the over and strikeouts Friday. No, no. Yeah. Enthusiasm yeah. in the dugout. Yeah. Yeah. Enthusiasm in the dugout. Andrew, great to have you yeah, on, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Um, all right. We got Pablo Lopez joining us pretty soon coming up. Uh, yeah, let's go over let's go over the postseason while we have a moment. Um, we got the Orioles and the Rays from this weekend, both clinching spots. And actually kind of awkward, according to I – spoke, I spoke to some people with the Rays um, this morning just to get a little word on the ballpark situation. But also, so they lose in a walk-off, and then they uh, got to go – they got to go celebrate. Hey, look who we got. What's Pablo up, Lopez doll? joining us in the sec. We'll get him mic'd up. What's up? What's yeah, up? I don't even know what you just you know said. I don't need I, because I heard you, but I didn't. I'll, I'll, his, his, I'll refra- stat, his prowess I'll is he, huge. I, it's a giant. I how big he was. Yeah. Pablo? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll rephrase. Okay, so Orioles yeah. raised this yeah. weekend. They played, right? He's he had the walk-off like? yesterday. Yeah. They both found out they clinched because the Rangers lost. So the Rays lost, but then they go, you got to sell it. Yeah, you have yeah, to. Yeah, I've yeah. been there before. Yeah, you, yeah, you, you have can't to. overlook that. Who no, cares? No. You, yeah. you got to look at the whole season. You have to. You're sitting there watching the TV, or it might have just happened at the same time. Exactly. So you're you're ready. Yeah. Pablo Lopez joining us right now on FT Live. Great to see you. How's the season going? Good, man. Good. And beautiful day out here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Of course. So has uh, the year one transition to a new franchise when you spent most of your career with Miami take me back like you see the trade and what was the first thing you thought no man it's it's been a fun year a lot of like a lot of new things a lot of new faces new philosophies new new a lot and going back I remember I was watching my nephew I was babysitting for my sister and then I get a text like you might get a phone call soon and then I got the phone call and then a lot of emotions a lot of like uh, mixed emotions mixed feelings happening but uh, then I realized what this opportunity meant, and then it was about showing up to spring training, getting to know the team, the organization, the philosophy, and then take it, taking advantage of, of every single resource that was avail- made available for me. And ever since then, I've been loving every single second. Uh, since, since I put the Twins jersey on, I've had a lot of fun. I've been creating a lot of like good memories, good friendships, good relationships, and it's been a really, really fun year. You want me? All right. Hey, you, you're, I don't even know what the word is because I don't want to say it. Right. You know, four different languages, right? <laughs> I learned four learned languages four to, growing now, up. Yeah. Growing up, or was that something recently that you did? Was that something in school that they made you do? Or? So, my parents were big in education. Yeah. Uh, they were both doctors. So, like, they pushed me and my sister a lot when it came to like going to school, getting good grades. So, they sent us to like this linguistic school yeah. where they were just teaching us tons and tons of languages. Oh, and gosh. later on, they asked, me which one i wanted to intensify on i chose english and yeah. thankfully i did because yeah. i ended up playing baseball and coming here so that's allowed me to communicate and you know like creating these relationships that's huge that's, i think they should be teaching that nowadays man that's it's hard enough just... speaking english oh, yeah, without, <laughs> right? a doubt, without a doubt um, and you grad you you got accepted to medical school at 16 years old yeah yeah that was, that was that's a tough decision as a, as a 16 year old like what i wanted to do did i want to play baseball do i want to follow my parents' footsteps and go to yeah. medical school. So, uh, and both things happen around the same time. I finished high school in June, got accepted to medical school in June. I got offered to sign with Seattle in July of the same year. So like oh I had to make that big decision right there. And then it was a big one for a 16 year old boy. Yeah. So, uh, thankfully my dad was there with me to help me make the best decision that I could. And I'm glad it worked out. Do you have aspirations after baseball to get back into the medical field or medical school i do want to go back to college i want to go to but i want i want experience i want to go to college i want to show oh, up right. i want to go to a classroom and i think for medical school would be would be too much would be too long but like i feel like the closest thing i could do like i do i want to become like a nutritionist a dietitian so mm-hmm. like i want to go to nutrition school uh this last off season i got big into like I wanted to like lose some weight, but what's the healthiest, what's the best way to do it? So I started reading a lot into nutrition, um, paying attention to what goes into the body and everything that goes on. So I don't know, I got fascinated with the idea and I would really like to like, whenever my baseball career is over, go to college, have the college experience, but also like become maybe a nutritionist dietitian. I've got a guy for you then. His name's uh, Carlos Correa. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. We spoke to him, you know, and I've known Carlos for years, but 
he came on the show once during spring training right before he was about to have one of his meals because he's got the whole <laughs> thing set up at home. Like, have you have you done it yet? Did you get to go to his spot in spring training for uh, for a little meal? You know, he's got his chefs. He's got the whole setup for him. And he's like big on on what he's putting in his body. No, he's so like that. That's that's one of the main reasons I've also been thinking more and more about this. You know, like I walk into the clubhouse spring training and I meet, I get to meet Carlos and then. I get to understand the way he goes about his business with everything, like the little things, the big things. And like it starts with the way you take care of your body. So I've been talking to him a lot. Uh, I've gone to experience some of those that uh, during spring training, I went to his spot and he's got his old crew, uh, very like very thorough the way they make things. They, they're very specific with like the ingredients and all that. And like that's really cool to see. You know, like you got to take care of your body because like you work with your body, you know, like our bodies are the ones that are day in, day out, putting all, putting in the work. So uh, it starts there. It's one of the foundations for what we do. Yeah. And that's what Carlos says. Like, he's good. He'll be like, I tell the players, you know, this is all about like getting your money, taking care of your body, right? Then after you play, you can do whatever you want. But right now, he's like, this is the time to shine. Like, yeah. is he saying that stuff to the guys, especially the young guys? Because you guys have gotten a lot younger at your roster over these yes. last few months. So he's all about that stuff and staying healthy. Like, if yeah. you're not healthy, you're not going to be able to play. So, like, I've heard him say that. I think it was last year the Twins had a lot, like a rough time uh, keeping people healthy. Yep. And then a lot of, like, some of the things he started bringing up to the organization that team dietitian was like taking care of like the spreads the meals on the plane like limiting the amount of the amounts of sugar uh foods that can you know like inflame our body like all that stuff so uh he talks a lot to the young guys about keeping you healthy so you are able to go out uh, maintain yourself healthy enough to be available to play mm -hmm. what do you think about the uh, pitch clock this year have you liked it not just for yourself as a pitcher on the mound but Obviously, when you're not pitching, the games end quicker. You still get the same amount of action. Like, do you think it's been a, a big positive for the sport? I think it has been. I think it has been. I, I remember going through spring training, the whole adjustment period, I getting pitch clock violation every five pitches. Did you and, get a lot of them? Yeah, I kept getting them. <laughs> I would throw a pitch and like I would like take a few steps forward, grab the ball, walk back, and then the clock would be at like four seconds, and like I started getting a, a ton of them. But like the the moment you start getting used to it, like the moment you start, you, you gotta, you gotta accept, you gotta embrace it. And then the moment you start seeing it and then you see the results, you know, the games are quicker, people are engaged. Mm -hmm. You, you are able to just like remain in the moment. I used to wander a lot with my head. I used to like think too much, trying to outsmart every single pitch, like the pitch clock. I, I get the ball, I hear the sign, then I execute. So like it keeps me in a good rhythm and it prevents me from like overthinking at times. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think I know the answer to this, Pablo. You, you're at the most innings you've had in a season in your career. Physically, how are you feeling right now, especially the last couple of weeks of the season? I'm, I've been feeling good, man. I made it a big, big priority this off season to um, be strong at every single point of the season. Last year, I was able to go 180 innings, but I, there were times in the second half that I'm like, man, I feel like I'm not 100% today. Like I was still going, I was still feeling good enough to pitch mm -hmm. to perform. But I knew I wasn't at my best. So I made it like a big, big priority. I got myself in the best shape I've ever been. I I kept going through trial and error and error to like improve my routines. Like before I throw, like I want to get ready to throw. I don't want to throw to get ready. You know, it's one yeah. of that once one of it, it was one of my minds is when it came to like I want to go to the field, get my work in. So I'm in a good spot physically and mentally. Uh, the second half came in and I was just feeling as good as I was feeling in April. Uh, just getting my work in and then listening to like uh veterans pitcher that have done it you know i got mm -hmm. sonny gray next to me and the pitching staff and like he's been a tremendous amount of help you know he's been through this a lot he's thrown a lot of innings in his career he's pitched for um, a lot of good teams so it's all about like i get to ask him and get the feedback from him like you know, you know like there were times in x season that i was feeling this way and i started deloading my bullpen in between stars mm -hmm. I, I may skip a bullpen in august in august like i'm not gonna throw a bullpen in between because i know like i have to right. feel for my stuff so he's been a great great resource for me this year that's a good question you bring up and i want to bring up as well so you have sonny gray who you could talk to how about a guy like joe ryan who's just coming up as well i played in the olympic trials with him what a well, he's, he's a crazy dude, right? So is he looking to talk to you and Sonny, uh, trying to get some feedback as well? Yeah, yeah. It's like he's always with a baseball in his hand. Okay. And, like, I'm just, like, in the corner of the dog. He'll come to me with a baseball and just throw at me the most, like, 
baseball random fact or like <laughs> he'd be like what do you what do you see on the, like let's say that we're gonna face the same team in the series and we're both watching one of our guys pitch like what do you see on these guys yeah. and then he'll throw like oh, i think he's only he he's only got a barrel in like splitters in the last six months and yeah. i'm like <laughs> like he knows stuff like that on the top of his head like that's impressive you know like i look at a lot of reports i pay attention to the game but like he'll throw like some obscure fact that is actually true and that he'll use for his advantage when he's when it's his time to pitch. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I get Sonny from the experience. I get Joe with the fun, random, and like, and also like, he's like big into like reading and like taking advantage of like the the analytics and all that. So, do you ever go to him then, like before start, and be like, all right? What do you got? What's your scouting report on these guys? Give me something weird. I'll ask him, like, what do you see on these guys? Yeah, and he's yeah. like, dude, I just feel like last year when this and this and that, like, they took two of my fastball and then they sat on something. So, like, I'll ask him. I'll ask, like, like, like if you face this team before, like, if you face this batter before, like, what's your history with them? And then, yeah, he 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 always got good stuff to say. That's cool. What about the second half for this team? Because you guys have had a nice second half of the season and kind of separated yourself in the division. I remember Max Kepler talking at one point about how he felt like there was just like more togetherness with everyone. I don't know if you caught the comments or how you feel about that, but did you sense anything differently from the team where he's like, I just feel like the team approach, everyone kind of looking out for themselves. You can see that converting on the field too. Have you seen any of that? I think in the first half, it was a lot of like, we knew the pieces were there, yeah. but maybe like, like you're saying, like maybe there was this feel of individuality, like people are like, we knew we were here, but like that, like that togetherness didn't come along, both on results, both on performances and like maybe as a team. So when the second half came, like we made it like a, like a big, big like priority. Like we know what we have here. We just have to put it together. We know we have the pitching. We know we have the hitting. We know we have the defense. Like let's put it together. But not only on the field, but also as a team. Like a lot of guys started taking more accountability when it came to the way we were preparing. Like we were running the meetings. We were we were really like diving into like the way we were getting ready as a team to like try to win a series, try to win a ball game. And then the moment it started showing up on the field, that gave us the confidence. You know, confidence gives you good results, good results give you confidence. And like we kept that cycle going and going and going. And then we started like taking it one game at a time, one game at a time. We kept that mentality. And then it's it's been a really fun second half. Like a lot of those pieces came together and that like now it's just one big puzzle of like togetherness. Okay, so I know you said that you you want to go into the college scene possibly after you get done playing. Do you have any aspirations to coach or manage? Because you sound like <laughs> speaks well. Yeah, yeah you are well a leader. Uh, <laughs> or and broadcast. I, I feel like uh, or broadcasting. Uh, you, you speak so well and confident. Like I, I feel like I can play right now because just listening <laughs> to you. Uh, I would love to. I mean, obviously, I know that's like long time, yeah, yeah, long yeah. time away in the future, but uh, it's something I would consider. Like I'm one of those guys that. Thank, thanks to many, many coaches and mentors I've had in the past, I've been able to develop into the person and player I am. So, like, I understand the huge impact a coach can have on a player, like a kid. So, it's definitely something that I would consider. Depends on, like, when my career my career ends, what my priority will be. But it's, it's like, it's something that I'll keep in mind, like, when, when it comes. Yeah. 15 more years. <laughs> you got yeah, a lot exactly. of time left. It's going to be a minute. Yeah. So, How's uh, Minneapolis life compared to Miami life? They're basically the same city, right? <laughs> <laughs> they could not be more different. Yeah. <laughs> Weather-wise, people-wise, activity-wise. But it's been good. It's been a fun, fun contrast, you know. I was in Miami for both the season and off-seasons. That's where I live in the off-season. So I was used to that, you know. Like, it's fun. It's a little hectic, a little yeah, crazy. Fast. Yeah. But then I get, like, the complete different contrast. I get Minneapolis, like, every, like you get that feel, like, that homey feel. Everyone's, like, very genuine everyone like cares about the team because it feels like the, it's like the city's team like the, it feels like the team is owned by the fans i don't know if that kind of makes sense yeah. like the fans go to the field and then like the, you feel like the real support and like it's it's been really fun like it was just cold at the beginning that was a big a tremendous adjustment i had to <laughs> that do that was fun right <laughs> and it was i pitch a game and it felt like 29 degrees so like that was really not <laughs> wow. fun Jeez. but i really yeah. enjoyed my time in minneapolis like it just it's such a it's you get like that homey feel like it's extreme, extremely kind extremely genuine so I've really, I think like I fit in really well there. Mm -hmm. So you still live in Miami during the off season now? Yes. So any chance you're a Miami Hurricanes fan? But now before you answer that, <laughs> uh -oh. There, uh -oh, there's yeah, a couple Miami of, grads here. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Are you Miami Hurricanes fan? I am fan? not a Canes fan. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs>
Did you are go to are any you games? the game fans? Well, me, yeah, we me and Scott went to both there. went to school nice. there. Did you go to any any games or like Heat, Dolphins, anything? I went there? to a couple Heat games, yeah. uh, the hockey team, the Panthers. Yep. I didn't go to any Dolphin game, but. Yeah, you weren't missing much. Maybe this year. <laughs> this year. Yeah, yeah, this year. Back on track this year. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, Pablo, it was great to see you, man. We awesome. appreciate it. Yeah, yeah see you. Thanks, Thanks, guys. For coming on. Appreciate yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Enjoy yeah. the rest of the season. Well, thank you, guys. Cheers. Appreciate it. Uh, Pablo Lopez with us on FT Live. Um, we're going to talk to Kyle Farmer coming up pretty soon. Uh, while we have a moment, yeah, let, let's sneak this in because it's going to get announced tomorrow. Looks like the Tampa Bay Rays are going to stay put, and I mean exactly stay put. I'm talking St. Petersburg and not Tampa. And I can't wait until we have Pierzynski on soon, but we're going to be able to go over that. I don't even think we're going to have time for this because we're going to get to our next guest coming up in just a second. What's up, Kyle? Um, so we'll get to it a little bit later on. I keep mentioning topics, but then you know, no, we get, yeah. we get we, interrupted. We got the boys out here. We got to get the boys ready. Let's do it. I mean, they'd rather. Especially he- this one. This one for this series. Yeah. This is a must. Yeah. This is the most requested player. It was kind of weird on the ears. Twins the and, and the Reds. Yeah. I can't exactly. believe we got him here. Like, I figured yeah. he'd be lined up, like, yeah. talking to so many people. Right, right now? He, no, he I didn't had to get thing, through all, all the interviews just now. <laughs> I love and then that finally, too. lastly, oh, yeah. ends Curbs. up with us on, on FT. It's Kyle Farmer from the Minnesota Twins, formerly of the Cincinnati Reds. Yeah. It is the Kyle Farmer series <laughs> coming up yeah. right here. So, how you doing, Just man? I'm waiting for the lefties to come in. That's all I'm, <laughs> That's all I'm waiting on. That's right. That's right. You're doing you, great. Uh, Thanks for having me. You excited to be back here? Yeah, it's cool. I love, you know, great ballpark and cool city. So, I'm, I'm happy to be back. A lot of my buddies are still over there, so it'll be cool to see Do them. you circle this on, on the cow because because you had a lot of fun times here? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, Bado texted me all last night, seeing what I was doing, <laughs> what I was up to. I was at Soto last night having dinner. Oh, cool. so nice. Fire. Why yeah, didn't really Bado good. come with you? Where is he? Is he is he with the – There's no telling what he's doing in there right, right. now. Yeah. Right. Oh, well, they were traveling too yesterday. Yeah. They, hey, listen. After the game today, guess where I'm going? Wait, Soto? This Jeff dude. Ruby. Are you really? Oh, the yeah. downtown? Waddy, what's up, man? New one, baby. The new one? You've been there yet? Yeah, Not, yeah. No, a lot of the guys what's went last up? night. How you doing? How's this dude? Tommy Watkins, man. This is the beauty. <laughs> he's kind of clueless at third, but he's <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Nothing, man. Go ahead. <laughs> Say he loves you. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, boy. He's cool. No, it's cool. Hey, so you're getting the MVP tonight. Yeah. That's awesome, year last year. dude. It was yeah, fun. man. It was cool. Go get a little video yeah. trip. Congratulations, dude. That's I take my hat off. Yeah, just, just a little. Hey, he told me not to because I'm kind of balding a little bit. Oh, let's, no, oh now we got to see it. Yeah, I mean, oh, it's kind of getting good. thin a little bit. No, yeah, you're good. Just, just good. this. Would look up a little bit. Like you're looking up. There, nobody will see it. Yeah, I don't know if the fans get up there that right now, do they? <laughs> but, uh, no, my wife. This year. This is kind of funny story. My wife to me on the bus. I didn't know it. They have like a wives group text. Uh-oh. And so uh, I guess Royce shaves his head like before every game or something like that. And so my wife said, maybe Kyle should start doing that now so he can hit better. Oh, and I, wow. and then Royce came in and said, hey, your wife was kind of bashing you a little bit. Because <laughs> his girlfriend told him to tell me. And I was like, Damn. wow. You didn't know about the tech, the group text at all? No, I'm not in the wives. Thank you. I know you don't. You don't know, know. Did and you I address it or did you just let it go? Yeah, I called it out. I yeah. called her out and she, she apologized. <laughs> <laughs> formal apology like yeah oh yeah. that's funny i yeah. heard um, conference. your big uh um luke bryan fan yeah can you do an impression i heard you're really good at impressions it's all too. right it's i was better when i was like 28 now i'm 33 so it was uh, now all your voice your changes like mine yeah exactly no it's like i'll do the radio one uh-huh. hey y'all you're listening to luke bryan on 94.9 the bull <laughs> wow and then like good. i've only been to one of his concerts but uh He's one of the cheesiest guys out there, but he, okay. uh, but he's he's got a good Kermit the Frog voice. All right, let's yeah. See. Can you do that? What the Kermit? Yeah. Can well, you? no, I can just do his voice. It sounds like yeah, Kermit yeah, the Frog. yeah, yeah. It's it's right. Country Kermit-y. girl, shake it for me, girl, shake it. <laughs> yeah, for me, yeah. Girl. All right, I like it. <laughs> Kermit, Kermit, Have you ever Kermit thought Kermit. about? I, I always feel like players should mess with the press more after games. Like, have you ever thought like, yo? After this game today, I'm going full Luke Bryan for the pre- for the co- whoever comes over yeah. for the reporters Beautiful. for the press. I could probably do that. I could do that. I've never done it though. But the but, best was Kike Hernandez did the. Uh, I forgot who was uh, put your picture with us with the Dodgers, but he thought that he was Latin the entire time. Oh, and so he was. He his locker was right next to our. Like I was like Kike, and then the pitcher, and then me. And so after each game. Uh, Kiko would bring the translator over there, so he would sp- talk Spanish. That's really so fun. fun. Well, you got Bobby Nightingale Jr. here, right? Now you can do the Luke Bryant with him. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, he would love that. <laughs> yes, he, would he would love would. that. He would. All right, so, go ahead. 
so tell me about um, life in Minneapolis because you did Midwest, you know, last yeah. year. So was it a big change for you? What was the like beginning of the year? It was it was, it was? There was snow on the ground? Yeah, you, know, you land and it was snowing and uh, the coolest thing was they have. The, you know the seats are all heated there in the dugout what but, uh, oh i know that nice. do they yeah. are there moats like how about the away team i don't remember no, no. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. i don't know <laughs> it either hell no that's baloney right there <laughs> well no i mean uh, my car got stolen in a diner that, oh, i have a house in a diner i got hit in the face then two days later my car got stolen Damn. and then it was a rough week rough Damn. First couple months for me in minnesota but it's better now where'd you get hit right here giolito threw one up and in knocked my four <sighs> teeth back i was out for like a month Wow, I remember that. Knocked him back. Shit. I don't see yeah, shit. Yeah, so when I got hit, my tongue was stuck underneath the four bottom teeth. I couldn't lift mm. my tongue. I, so I was like talking like this and uh, dropped and then took me to the hospital and had surgery. Damn, dude. Uh, so then car gets stolen. And car gets stolen. Sweet Bronco, too. Damn. Well, that's why you got insurance, right? Yeah, <laughs> yes, so. Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> Damn, dude, that's crazy. Yeah, so but I, I like Minnesota a lot, though. It's great. <laughs> it is cool. Well, after that, though, you're like, all right, can't yeah. get much worse for a week. No, been well, fishing on the lake. I was just going to ask fun. you if you fish up there. Yeah, we were. I was fishing for uh, musky last week, and those are the big fish. And it, they'd say it takes ten thousand casts before you catch one, and I believe them because I, I caught, I had a bite. We we're fishing top water, and he ripped it, and all of a sudden this thing came up like this. It was wow. probably forty nine inches to fifty inches. Oh. oh my Gosh. And uh, he he let it go, and I couldn't get get one back in. But I was out there for six hours and didn't catch one. We were casting. Wow, what is fun? A musky? Is that what it's called? Yeah, musky. Never heard of a musky. I'm, a I'm not fish. a big fisher guy. Though. Do you Nothing, eat that? No, you don't eat it. Okay. No, it's like a trophy fish. Nice. Yeah, fifty inch. Fish. That's it's insane, huge. man. No, it's it's, it's, it's huge. fifty inches. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, who are you gonna talk to before the game on the other side? Like, were you tight with Jonathan? India? Yeah, it was. Uh, me, India, Sinzel, we were all pretty close. We'd go out to dinner, go out together, have yep. fun, because all of our girlfriends and wives, you know, got along as well. So it was easy just to hang out with everybody. And um, definitely going to try and say hey to Vado. And, um, yeah, India's probably – India and Sinzel, my guys. Yeah. Do you uh, miss catching at all? No. I always tell these young kids, I said – don't pick that spot, man, because if you're good at it, you'll never play anywhere else. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I, it's after catch, playing short, then catching, then going back to shortstop. Yeah. Catching is the hardest position I think in any sport. It's in, it's takes a special person to do it. My knee. I just think about your knees, man. I feel like yeah, Jake I mean, Taylor from uh, Major, yeah. League. <laughs> Major League. That's right. <laughs> well, so are you the emergency catcher? I was more of a Rube Baker guy. Rube, oh, Rube. Yeah, I was a Rube, Rube Baker. Rube. <laughs> I had the magazines. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. I think everybody did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I it, I think it was more the concussions for me. I think I had like three or four concussions Damn. catching. So got two over, I had two over here with the Reds. But you are you are designated. Joey. Oh, we see your boy. Hey, we're, we're busy. Did Tell you Joey see what he just here. said? Did Bean you? burger. Yeah. What'd he say? All right. He's got to work. work. He got, did you hear what working. he just said to Todd? What do you, you should say? tell him about this. Oh, he goes, man. he goes, what a bean burger. Bean oh, burger. He used to make these bean burgers. Everybody's having a regular burger the whole time. He has these bean burgers. And I I used to just make fun of him. I'm like, what the hell are you eating in there? It's all these like vegetables in there. And he made them one day. And I'm like, dude, I just don't ever put that thing near me That's again. So a he, bean he, burger? That's a nice. bean burger. <laughs> Joey he's said a, he would pick on breed. You know him. He's a different breed. He, he is. But he would pick on Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> you should use that against him though today. But he, he told us, he was like, Todd would walk in and be like, Joey, what do you got? Yep. You got a bean burger again? <laughs> <Yeah. Huh?" laughs> like in front of everyone, like, you got another bean burger? That's, how, old are, how old are you now? I'm 21. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, 30, 41. I'm 37. So do you think that you think when he hit 40, you think it was like, damn, I'm 40, and it's like, I can't believe I'm still playing? Yeah, I I think so. Yeah, I would say it's so. It's crazy. It's crazy. Because you think, because I remember having a conversation with the Reds brass trying to get a deal. Mm -hmm. Like, when do you think you, you know, you're going to be out of your prime? And I honestly said 37. Oh, really? I did. I said, I, I said by the time I'm 36, 37, I'll be on the down slope. Wow. And I never got a chance to get there. <laughs> 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 Maybe I should have said 47. Maybe I would call That's it. That's probably what he said. Yeah. It was cool. I was in the Futures game here when you won the Home Run Derby here. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so yeah. I was on I was on the field watching it. Oh, you saw it on the field? Yeah, it was cool. Oh, wow. Dude, that is so awesome. Yeah. That is cool, man. It was awesome that you played here and you won. It we talked about sweet. that, that a cool. bunch today. That What a, what an amazing day. And that, you were on the field. Where? Like, where were you? I was over there on the third base side. Because that's where we were. We finished. 
And then I got to, I don't know, I don't know who I talked to, but I snuck around and, and kind of got, got yeah, to stay. Yeah, Cal throwing that's... absolute fuzz right now. This is what he does. Who? Co- Colin Calgo, the first base coach, just throws absolute fuzz. This is why Joey Votto is one of the best hitters ever played this game. He's got a guy throwing lefty on lefty getting ready to go. You, you got a lefty on the mound today? No, no, Joe Ryan's on the mound. No, no? Joe Ryan. And he hides the ball, Sim- too. He hides it. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Similar heater, though. Yeah, exactly. You think Calgo like watched video of oh, Joe Ryan and was like, yeah. "All right, same slide." All, all those guys do. So, kind Buck, let me ask. So, from being a catcher and a shortstop, like you should know what's coming every time you're at the plate, right? No, <laughs> not in today's world. <laughs> no, my God, they got sweepers. That's they got why splitters. I can't. That's why I'm not playing anymore. We got Durant on a splitter at a hundred, so I mean, you never know what's going to no. come. Jeez. So, is a sweeper any different than uh, what it used to be called a slurve? I think it's the same thing. Yeah. I think a slider now is more of a cutter. And a sweeper is more of a combo mm-hmm. of a curveball and a slider. But those slider cutters are like 94, 96. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, yeah. How do you hit? Like, you go up to the plate. I, I remember um, Roy Holiday. Mm-hmm. God bless him. I remember when he pitched, he had five or six pitches. You're like, dude, you got you to gotta go yeah. up there looking for one or two. And if you don't get it, you got to tip your cap. And that's what happened every time. I got like one hit off him. <laughs> yeah. Because they, I'm looking for the cutter, sinker, change up, curveball. They all come out of the same tunnel. And it's, it, yeah, it's here and then zoom, zoom, zoom. Yeah, it's, it's, getting pretty ridiculous now but we as times have changed they've come out with more technology for hitters and stuff to figure yeah. out like we have a traject at our stadium that has the pitcher's motion and then you can calculate wow. the spin rate the movement of the ball and it goes in the computer and that machine changes it and it like spits out the exact same stuff that they're throwing which is pretty cool and the machines now you can like a normal machine you can you can type it in and say like slider ball slider strike wow. and you don't see the machine moving so it's like you can train yourself to which tunnel you're going to tunnel in and which one to take wow Jeez. so it's pretty cool is, awesome. some, is some of the information too much information sometimes yeah i mean when you get to like the the vaa and the expected and all that that stuff it's just kind of what's vaa vertical i, I don't even know but <laughs> I, it was on the sheet today and his it said like his vaa is really good oh man can I bet your VAA that? was pretty good. I, yeah, yeah. I don't even know what that means. I don't like, either. And I'm pretty good on that stuff. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. That's cool. funny. Appreciate it, man. Well, Kyle, it was great to have you yeah, on, thanks, man. Yeah, thanks, guys. Congrats on, on getting you on the MVP too. Too. award uh, I appreciate today. it. No Thank speech, you. though, right? That's cool. Yeah. I hope not. That was my major in college, but hopefully not. Oh, yeah. I hope they give you the mic. Nah, they probably If they give you the mic, you got to do it, Luke Bryan. I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, but if he does it, he also is probably, they're probably worried he's going to go like, let's go twins, baby. Let's go. Forget about you guys. It's about me. It's over. Yeah. Yeah. Different leagues, though, so he can do that. (laughs) True, true. Appreciate it, man. Good to see you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'm going to go to Oh, good. We got a little, we got a little Votto BP. Give me something good right now here, Todd. Let's see what he's got here. He is. He's going opposite field. That's all he does. Thank, Thank you, you. What he does in BP, everything opposite field. So when there is a mistake, he can easily go the regular way and hit one out. He's trying to hit the ball in the left center field gap, if not off the wall. And that's what he's always done ever since I've been around him. Oh, he went. It's a beauty. Dude, uh, seriously. He's the first one out here hitting, though. Look at him. Calgo ha- hides the ball. Yeah. Like, how, does he, how do you pick it up that close? Did he have any whiffs? Colin, oh, you should have pitched back in the day, man. Ah, dude, you hide the ball so well. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll uh, tell everyone. Get you on the bump. Tell everyone what he said. He said it's so fucking nasty his yeah. pitch, and it, it, yeah. it's not fair. Is he throwing uh, secondary pitches too? I don't know if he. I'm sure he has it. I didn't see. I'm sure he does. Jeez. I mean, as a first base coach, you're doing your homework, of course. Yep. Who, who the outfielders are, everything else. Why not tinker with something in spring training? I do. I do it with my nine-year-old kids. I'm trying already. <laughs> yeah, I got a good little curveball, got a little change. I like it. Oh. <laughs> All right, ready for this? Yes. So finally, we can get to it. The uh, yeah, breaking news for you as of today: the Tampa Bay Rays are set to announce a deal for a new stadium in St. Pete. They're not going anywhere. Krasinski's crying because they're not moving to Orlando, but they're not <laughs> even moving out of St. Petersburg. And that's where you're going to have controversy. So here's at Field of Schemes saying, how would this solve the Rays attendance woes? If the problem is fans hate domed stadiums and St. Pete is too long a drive from Tampa and the new stadium would be a dome in the same place as the old stadium Hmm. is unclear. Facts. Facts is right. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why, though. 
because they're going to give them all the freaking land and they're going to every owner's dream is to build what the Braves have no matter what. So if they can get a city to give them like tax free land and they can do their own thing, capitalize off of it, they don't really care about the rest. The problem is, though, if you make a nicer place and you build an environment around it, it is going to help. Yes. But is it going to get the people that don't want to drive in two hours of traffic coming from Tampa or beyond, yeah. right? Because remember, yeah. it, Tampa's talked about, but then you have beyond that don't want to go on the bridge for anyone that's unaware. And I'm not going to be the Florida expert yet because I've only well, been around that area not for no, too long. No, but you're right, though. It's a problem. I grew up in Tampa. We didn't want to go to St. Pete. It's a it's a pain in the butt to go that far along that long bridge just to go to that nasty place. I don't think that the, the issue is even the dome. Like, okay, you got a dome, but move it. Out of St. Pete, move it out of that area. Make it easier uh, access to get there for fans. It's ridiculous. No, and, I, and people understand as we hear an F bomb from Joey. Yep, that's a, <laughs> hey, everything is game, game, game speed. But it's a business. People forget this all the time. Baseball's a business. You don't think they're trying to make as much money as they can and try and get away with as much as they can? Of course, that's of course. that's the only thing they're trying to do. It's just a bummer because. <laughs> for helping the sport at the same time, having the long-term picture of, hey, the more successful this franchise is, the more this franchise is worth, the more all of our teams are worth. But they're trading off that they get breaks from the city. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's but, crazy. You know, I, I, yeah, it's I'm, it's important that you mentioned it because you know the area super well. It sucks. I mean, the Tampa Bay Lightning dominate in Tampa. It's 20 yeah. Whatever, how, however long they've and been around, they 30 years ago. They're in downtown Tampa, yeah. no? Yeah. That's okay, great. But th they started their games uh, at the Trop when they first got there, I believe. Mm -hmm. And that was a pain. And then they moved. They've become an event there. Yes. And let yes. me tell you, Florida's not known for its hockey, okay? Yeah. You don't have, like, a bunch of young, you know, hockey players in Florida. I mean, they've got hockey, but it's not the big sport there. Right. Yet they – and the team's had a lot of success. But the Rays have had a lot of success. Yeah. They don't have enough people at their games this year. And right. I know the, the stadium's a dump, but I'm just like – And it's not going to be an guys. overnight process no. either. You need years. It's going to take years. Yeah, I think it's 2028, 20, I want to say, that, that they'd be moving. But right. I don't know. It's just a bummer. You, you wish that they would have been in a different location. Yeah. Um, Dude, when, when it, there's a sign at that bridge that says, fuel up before you get to the bridge. That, that okay. means it's too <laughs> far to go. Problem. It's too far you to go. You know what that means for a lot of people? Turn around. Turn around. Yeah. Yep. We'll watch on TV. Yep, that's It'll right. We blacked yeah. out anyway. No, right. I'm just no. <laughs> I spoke to some people this morning, though, that worked for the Rays, and they said, I said, what did everyone say when they saw the news this morning? He said, they're fucking pissed. Yeah. He said, yeah. they are pissed because they were like, we want people to come. And these are people working like front office behind the scenes that are putting everything into, yeah. into uh, you know, putting a good product on the field. And, try, and trying to sell tickets. Yes. yes and they're course. like, we are, we are giving people a consistent contender. And they want to come, but they don't want to go to that area. Yeah. You are like purposely like hiding it, hiding the location from people, you know? Yeah. Well, what are you going to so, do? It sucks. Anyway, um, just wanted to get that out there. Uh, oh, we're going to have an amp caller coming up. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Uh, we're going to do a caller. Um, it'll take a second, but we're going to bring up a little, little Q&A. Oh, yes. Todd's favorite part Love of the show. Somebody a new calls little edition. in with Usually, hopefully they're from New Jersey because it makes me happy, and then yeah. we go from there. Yeah, nice. Todd nice. kind of judges these based on the accent. You That's know? it. I don't give any respect if I don't hear the accent. No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, so we'll get a caller in just a sec. Okay, here we go. So um, if you want to listen to the show live, like radio style, um, you go to Amp. Um, we'll talk about it as we slap hands. <laughs> No, that's my facility at home right there. Is it? Yeah. That's where you throw in the breaking balls oh, to the yeah, nine-year-olds? the hammer space. That's where Todd practices. That's the spot. That's the lab, it's called. The lab. All right, we got, we got someone on the line ready to go on AMP. So uh, whoever you are on AMP, let us know your name, your favorite ball club in baseball, and what is your question and comment and or comment for Todd Frazier and Mr. Danny Graves. Go ahead. Hey guys, how are you doing? I'm Spencer Reyes. I actually am from Central Jersey, so big New Jersey and Mets fan. So my question God. for you guys. I didn't I couldn't hear it then. Oh, he said I'm sorry. He said it's Spencer. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you Spencer. Okay, I don't know why I, you heard him? Yeah. Man, yeah. what happened to my thing? Oh, oh I, yeah, I got unplugged. unplugged. That's unplugged. what happens. Go ahead. Go ahead, Spencer. Sorry, we cut you off, bud. I'll grab it. Go ahead. 
That's all good. It's all me. So I'm, I'm from South Jersey. Man, What's up, huge. son? And I'm looking to see your team. Tell him, baby. What's the next step for them to move forward to be winning ball club? For the Mets? You said Mets, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so Spencer, he's okay. from Central Florida. Or right. Central, Central Jersey. Jersey. Sorry. We're just on Central Florida. And uh, he's a Mets fan, and he wants to know what they got to do Oof. in the off season. Like They got to do one thing and one thing only, and that's sign Shohei Otani. Really? And I, I think <laughs> you think they have a chance? They, they'll have a chance, and that's the biggest thing. They had the pieces. They blew it by getting rid of Verlander and Scherzer. I don't know what the thinking was there. Thinking uh, was they weren't good this year. No, but what? It's a year. What happened? They have them for next year too, as well. I, I don't, I don't get that thing. But here's one thing that the Mets are going to say they're not going to do, but they're going to do. They said they're not w- worried about the 2024. They're going to go after it. Thank Cohen's you. not going to sit back now. And next thing you know, they're going to get they're going to get a couple pieces, more free agents. And now when you pick these free agents, make sure you got them locked down and not worried about. All right, what happens this year if they don't do good this year? Who cares? You don't need to all of a sudden. Get rid of all the guys. You have the pieces. You have the hitters. It's just put everything together. You need more pitching. Mm-hmm. So you need your pitching back again. Yeah, I, I think if uh, you could possibly add like more team type guys, yep. now, you know, uh, there's a lot of egos, and I'm not saying they all don't get along, but yep. uh, you know, when you have a ton of egos and a ton of money made between a lot of guys, it, it's tough in a clubhouse. So. Yep. Uh, the, the free agents that they go after or the trades that they make, I think if you bring in some team guys, um, whatever you want to pay them, it makes a difference with the camaraderie. And then you start, you, you do play differently when you actually get along with everybody, you know? Yeah. My thing, Spencer, look up Yamamoto. He's playing in Japan. He's a freaking yeah. stud. Yeah. And he's 25 years old. That's the dude you lock up long term. If I'm the Mets, they've had a ton of success with Kodai Senga. And then maybe Shohei's like, "Oh, that's my boy. I might need to come on board." That's true. That's true. Just saying. They signed Kodai Senga in the offseason from overseas. He's been awesome. I mean, he's He's a rookie of the year candidate. Mm Right. He's been the probably the biggest bright spot for the team. The ghost fork. The ghost fork. Right. He's marketable. His gloves are are ridiculous. They're super cool. So that's what I would do. That's where I would start, especially for second place. If you don't, if you don't finish. And first for Shohei, that's no. the guy. And he's going to get a lot of money this offseason, I'm telling you, because the starting pitching market got pretty thin, too. So, you know, I mean, I'm basically – most teams are going to cross Julio Rios off their list. He was going to be one of the top starters. Yeah. So yeah. the risk, the the list shrunk a little bit. Hey, join AMP. Um, it's free. At Foul Territory is where you should follow us and listen to the show streaming live. And also, if you would like to converse with us, then you can do that there as well. Um all right, so let's. Uh, I want to thank um, the Reds for hosting us here. And guess what? You want to do it again tomorrow? Let's go. Let's we'll do be it back. again tomorrow. Yeah, with some sunscreen. Yes. <laughs> and we'll we'll be at the game tomorrow too. If you want to say hi to us, good luck finding us. But we will be here. Um, we're gonna take over uh, the BetMGM Instagram account tomorrow and have some fun. Um, and also the uh, the new BetMGM sportsbook is opening up right around the corner. We'll give you more info on that front thank you to the twins and the reds for um letting us uh, corrupt their ball players dustin morse and rob butcher behind the scenes we appreciate Thanks, that guys. look forward to doing that the next couple days Thanks, Joey Votto, for being very close by to us. We are going to bother you right now and make you come on the show tomorrow. There you go. A little bit of MGM action right next to the Twins and the Reds as they play tonight to start up a series. FT Live taking over the next couple days. We will see you on Tuesday.